starting all year long. They may need Phil Teddy today if the starter, Big Ten, can't get the job done. So those just a couple of things we'll look at during the ballgame as the Gators get ready to take on the game time. Bob, back up to you. Okay, well, thanks a lot. The Florida Gators, coached by Steve Furrier, still thinks this team has a shot to win the SEC East, but they need some help. Georgia or Tennessee both have to lose. And, of course, Brad Scott, the coach of the Gators, now in his fourth, or the Gamecocks now in his fourth season. You see his record. He's got to win one or two games to get a bowl bid yeah, this year. Yeah, certainly has to win one. That would give him six victories. Uh, the two would be unbelievable for him. He would love to win this football game. They feel they have a shot at this game. You see the series. Florida leads it 11-3-3. And, and last year, Florida beat up on South Carolina 52-25. And the Gators lead here in Columbia. 4-3-1. and one. Steve Florio to kick off for South Carolina. Short kick. McCaskin, the fullback, is going to come up and watch it bounce. And go oh, out of bounds. did it go out of bounds? I don't think so. I don't think it did. I think it bounced straight up. They're going to mark it. I think it bounced straight up, Bob. Look at him. They're all pointing. Oh, this could be a huge turn of events. Homer Torrance is the one who came down there and got the ball. Oh, Torrance is through the right now. Did the ball go out of bounds when it hit? Okay, the ball bounced straight up. He was obviously going to allow it to go out of bounds to take the penalty. That's the discussion right now. Yeah, the official down there and keep together. Okay, Bob, what they said is the ball went out of bounds. Let's look at the ball right there. That's where I think they say it bounced on the line. It doesn't bounce there. I think it might have hit yeah. when it when it first landed. I think it hit. Let's yeah. watch here. Yeah, that's right on the line. I think that's a good call. Boy, South Carolina, that could have been a huge turnover. So the ball goes out of bounds on the kick. They're explaining it now to Brad yeah. Scott. Yeah, I think that's what he said right there. Did you see the official saying on the line when it hit right there? It's on the line. Now, when it bounces the second time, it's in bounds. Yeah, Eugene McCaslin was right there for the Gators and saw it, and that's why I don't think he went after it. Noah Brindai gets the start for the Gators at quarterback. Now they go right to the run with Fred Taylor. Skips for one tackle, Lee Wiggins, and is rolled down after a pickup of three. Corey Atkins slides out from his linebacker spot. Noah Brendeis, you see his stats on the season, the five touchdowns and two interceptions last week against Vanderbilt. 13 of 25 for 222 yards and two touchdowns, and he played pretty well. Yeah, he did play very well. Uh, they don't think he's as strong a quarterback as Doug Johnson is, but he played very well last week. In fact, Steve Spurrier mentioned twice those two fade passes for touchdowns that he threw were very good passes. Second and seven. Brindice again, the throw. The out pattern overshot. It was intended for his tight end, Aaron Kinney, overshot, and so it'll be third down and long. Now here's a look at our Nations Bank starting lineups. First, the Gator offense. Well, Travis McGriff is their hero. He's the one that's their, kind of their possession. Jockett Green's their big playmaker. Fred Taylor's got a lot of yards. They've got a good, strong offensive backfield. The line is just, it's a mix-up. Every week it's someone different. This week they're starting Taylor's at the center, Collins Booth from left tackle over to right tackle. A lot of indecision on that offensive line. Third and seven. Brindis looking. Guns it out on the flat. Complete. And this is going to be a first down. Fred Taylor into South Carolina territory inside the 40-yard line where he's knocked down by a Thurl Freeman. They go to the tailback out of the backfield for the first down. Here's a look at our Nation's Bank starting lineup for the USC defense. Well, Shane Burnham, the coach's son, has got to have a big game in the middle. Corey Atkins and Caldwell at the other backers. Their defensive line has got to get pressure, and that most times comes from Abraham and Taylor in the middle. So they've got to get pressure. One of the matchups that we're going to watch as we look at the secondary, of course, talks about Arturo Freeman and Ben Washington at the safety. There, that's the strength of this defensive secondary. 25 yards to pick up on a third down and long. Rindai jumps oh. over the middle, and he's got his man, Zonkaz Green. They're going to mark it at the 27-yard line. Oh, what a hold on uh, Shane Burnham. Shane Burnham was blitzing up the middle, and someone just reached out, and I want to say they grabbed him in the face, man. Rogers Reddings makes the call. They oh. catch the Gators right in the middle of the line, holding Shane Burnham, the defensive coordinator's son. Watch 52 coming to your screen right there. Now watch him get turned around right there. He's 
Well, he's in the right of your screen. You can't really see it from that angle, but he just got pulled. His face got pulled right back around. Of course, that's what they're going to need. They're going to need big plays. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first half. So they march it from the 40, actually back to the 49 of Florida. So the Gators have a long way to go here. And Bob, one of the problems that South Carolina has is the matchup of bringing Fred Taylor out of the backfield. And he matches up against one of the backers. He's a lot faster. They're going to use that a lot today. They've already used it on that one long play, Fred Taylor against Shane Burnham. Four wide receivers in for the Gators on first and long now. Brandeis. It's incomplete, intended for Travis McGriff. Ray Green was back there covering, and that time the Gators saw six defensive backs on the field yeah. in Carolina. Yeah, they're going to make that adjustment. They bring out one of their backers, and of course bring Lee Wiggins. He moves up to actually a linebacker spot, but that's a pass that you've got to come away with. McGriff has got to catch that football. Brindice doing a nice job in the pocket, moving around, getting away from pressure. Big down here, second down, about 20 yards to go. They've got to stop him. They mark it at second and 24. Gators at their own 49-yard line. Scoreless here early in the first quarter. Draw play, Taylor. Picks his way into Carolina territory. Knocked down at the 45-yard line. Pushed back by Corey Atkins. Well, that was good recovery by the backers there. You like that draw play if you're Steve Spurrier because what happens is you're hoping for that pass rush, hoping to get those backers caught up in the flow. You see 52 Burnham. You talk about Atkins, 58 moving into the play. Good, just good, solid. You don't mind giving up four or five yards on that play. Watch the hole right here to your left. See, there's the hole. Now watch the quick recovery. See right there, the back sees that hole. Now you see the back come back in there. 58 is Corey Atkins, 52 is Shane Burnham. Pat Browning is the pulling guard there. They've got the opening for Taylor. But still the Gators far short on the first down. It's now third and 18 at the Carolina 45. Brindise over the middle, got a man wide open. Zach has green inside the five-yard line. Brindise had plenty of time and found the streaking green on a post pattern. Well, that was an interesting call by South Carolina. They only had two down linemen rushing. They were dropping everybody back. You see the one lineman there? The other one, that's 90, is Henry Taylor and Caldwell in the middle. Nobody else rushing. They dropped nine back into the secondary and still got beat by the big play man, Jacques Green. 41 yards on the pitch and catch, and the Gators have it first in goal. Florida on its first possession, marching down the field against South Carolina. Hand off to the fullback. Not much there, powering down to the three-yard line, and so Brendice gives the ball to Frazier, who's knocked out by Marster. Well, Brendice looking to the sideline, they pick up a signal. That's one thing that keeps that backup quarterback in the game, is that he takes the signals right off of Steve Spurrier. See the red zone result. Florida very, very good in the red zone. 83%, over 83% of the time, they get some points. Taylor at tailback, gets the pitch. Frazier the block, and Taylor gets it down to the one. Mark Love, the middle linebacker, slides over and knocks down Taylor, keeps him out of the end zone. And also over there, Corey Atkins, number 58, the fine outside linebacker. Well, you can't get knocked down if you're a defensive lineman. You've got to be able to slide. You try to get penetration and slide the line, and that's what South Carolina does very well there. The middle backer, Mark Love, he's the senior who replaced Shane Burnham when he got when he broke that hand, and he played well on that play. Slide, slide, come up and stop him. Big down here. Third and goal, Florida. First possession, ninth play of the drive. Oh, they jumped offside. The quarterback was trying to call an audible. Brindise was walking down the line to make sure yeah. everybody had to play, and suddenly Pat Browning fired out. I wonder, so, that was interesting. As Brindise came up the line, now watch, he's going to pull his hands out of center and try to call an audible, and you see Browning come offside. That could be a big play for South Carolina. Instead of being third down and one, they'll now be third down and about six. Taylor comes out of the game for the Gators. And Bob, that's just evidence of their, all the switches that they've had on that offensive line. They, these Furrier team has not been healthy this year. They have switched players all across that line. No running back on a third and goal. Rindai fires the trip. Blasted by Hunter Torrance. Terrific defensive play by the junior from Oakland, Florida. Hunter Torrance keeping McGriff out of the end zone. It's fourth down. 
Boy, what Palmer Tarn to be here. Number 25. He's a nickelback. He's playing the coverage right here. There's the throw. Now, watch Tarn react to the ball, and you see he just about breaks the receiver. He just sticks him hard. That's McGriff, the uh, the wide out, the go-to guy. You know, I saw, I think I saw Mo Collins go out of the game hurt. So, uh, again, compounds the problems that uh, Florida has had on offense. And now a timeout is asked for. Steve Spurrier going to talk about things. 10.27 to go in the first quarter here at Williams Bryce Stadium. We are scoreless. Dave, interesting development because of the fact Carolina wins the toss, but they give the ball to Florida, and the Gators are marching it right down the field. Well, a lot of times you'll do that. If you, if you get a good defensive stop, then you get good field position. But you're right. Florida picked them. They picked them on that Fred Taylor out of the backfield matchup against Shane Burnham and picked up a lot of yardage on that play. The officials called a timeout now. I wonder if there was a penalty flag that we did not see. Rogers Redding is trying to sort things out. Well, what went on, Roger? Tell us. Roger, tell us. You see, there's, of course, Brad Scott asking what happened. And he knows what we're doing down there. I guess the offense has been required for that. So, an eligible receiver, that means that the penalty is declined. It is a fourth down now for the Gators. And the timeout is asked for. And so the Gators will have a fourth and goal when we come back. Scoreless game, 10.27 to go in this first quarter. How Charlie the Barber. Fourth and goal, Gators. After the timeout and the decline penalty, six defensive backs in for South Carolina. And the Gators need two yards for a touchdown. Fred Taylor is back at tailback. This is an interesting call. Fourth down. They're going for a touchdown. They're not going for the field goal. Bad snap. Grindyke picks it up. Fires into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida. Kenny Richardson on the reception. And the Gators get on the scoreboard on a key fourth down conversion. A two-yard pass from Grindyke to Jamie Richardson. Boy, this is a gutty call. All the action went to the right to the strong side of the formation, and Richardson just kind of snuck out the left. See everybody looking over here to the right? Good fake. You see Richardson come across against the grain and catch the ball thrown a little bit behind him. Good catch right there. It's a heck of a call. I think that Steve Freer felt if he could hold him down there. If they didn't score, he'd still hold him down there, Bob. On to try the extra point is Collins Cooper. And the Gators take the opening kickoff, march it right down the field, a 10-play drive. And the Gators take a 7-0 lead. Well, Bob, this again, this is this direction play. All the action goes to the left of your screen. It's a strong side play. Look at the quarterback looking out. He's fake pump. Richardson in the bottom of your screen kind of sneaks across on the action and breaks the plane, comes down with a touchdown catch. So a heads-up call, good call. They were trying to get South Carolina to overplay the play, and they got the results of it. Richardson just got deep enough to get into the end zone, and Homer Torrance was there, but it was too late. Let's go downstairs down to Warren Pepper. Just want to let you know, uh, Mo Collins goes out in that last series inside the 10-yard line. He went down, checked with their doc, uh, Dr. Pete says, and he's got a bad hamstring, but it wasn't the knee that they first were worried about. Also, Florida has a phenomenal ability to score points in the first quarter, don't they? They outscored their opponents coming into this game in the first quarter this year, 111 to 31. Doc? Good opening drive for the Gators that time. 10 plays, 65 yards, but 439, and Richardson collects the touchdown. Robbie Stevenson now to kick it off for the Gators. And Blue Williams will drop deep. Well, it's Brindice who came out under control, very poised, did a nice job. Yeah, he certainly did. And, uh, you know, he came out, he had control of his offense, he picked up good blitzes, did a couple good reads there on uh, a couple of plays. So they have to be happy with him in Florida. They have to be, right now they have to be satisfied. Now it's an important time for South Carolina. They have got to come out and drive the football, get some yardage. Blue Williams back in his two-yard line. Williams finds his team. And gets it out of clock, the 33-yard line. Good return for Boo Williams, second in the SEC, and kickoff returns. Ronnie Battle comes up to stop Williams. And now Big Penn coming out. He's behind the eight ball, trailing already 7-0. That's not what Carolina wanted. No, it certainly is not what they want. He came in a tough position 
last week was interesting. Uh, Brad Scott told us when he came out there, he said he turned around and said to me, this is what Brad Scott said, he said, Coach, I'm not going to let you down. What a tough position to come in when Anthony Wright got hurt. And he did perform very well. I think there's a flag all the way back. I'm about to end it up to 45 yards. And that right here is the 35-yard line. Nation's Bank, a proud sponsor of SEC football, is your place for mortgage loans. Call 1-800-NATIONS today. Nation's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. First and 10 Gamecocks, first possession, 35-yard line. Drew Williams, Jacob Bush in the backfield behind Victor Penn. And Williams gets the first chance and nothing going on. This is a Gator defense that is second in total defense and also first in the SEC against rushing defense. Here's our nation's bank, South Carolina starting offense. Well, if South Carolina's going to have success. It's got to start with Drew Williams, their leading rusher. They've got Zola Davis, their outside man, their go-to guy, Terry Hood. Their offensive line is a strong offensive line. They've had a lot of uh, injuries. We talked about Nesbitt. He was the leading SEC person. Beckwith, awfully strong at center. And an interesting story that we'll talk about more as, we, as the game goes on is Jason Lawson getting his first start at right tackle. Nick Penn, his first pass. And he overshoots his man, Zola Davis, coming out with a flat. And so now Victor Penn facing a third and long. Boy, this is Florida time. This is Florida defense time. There's our Florida starting defense, Richard Drew. Solid tackle, really just coming back. Rogers puts a lot of pressure, as does Moten and Cohen. Their defensive linebackers are strong, Rutledge, Thomas, and Church. Their secondary with Fred Weary, the two outside guys, Fred Weary and, of course, Elijah Williams, Weary, the all-time interception leader, and they've got good strength at the middle with Brown and George at the two safety positions. Carolina goes to the shotgun, and now Vic Penn comes under center. Paul Beckwith is the center, one of the best in the SEC. The play clock winding down. Penn gets it off. Third down. Pressure. Gets away from one gator. And he's going to run out of bounds, short of the first down. Mike Moten is the guy back there putting the pressure on. And then finally run out of bounds by Dwayne Thomas. I think Moten had him. Watch number 90 come into your screen. This is a little bit of a twist. They bring the inside rush. Look at both. He's got him right here. Boy, I'll tell you, you don't want to do that if your defensive lineman miss a quarterback. So it's uh, Monday when you look at the game, so they rad you pretty strong. But uh, Big Ten are able to uh, avoid a big loss, so they don't suffer that loss. If you give uh, Florida the ball at midfield, they're going to get a good punt out of this and drive them back. Courtney Levitt on the punt. Carolina has punted the most of any SEC team. 61. This is their 62nd punt. Good one by Levitt. Jacquez Green back to his own 20. And he's going to be rolled down before he gets to the 30. Good coverage by Carolina as Darren Brooker is down to make the play for the game shot. So Florida's second possession backed up a bit this time. 47 yards on the kick by Courtney Levitt. Big Saturday, a good one coming up. Tim Couch and the Kentucky Wildcats will host the Tennessee Volunteers at Peyton Manning. 12.30 is our start time Eastern. Next week from Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Couch and Manning, Tennessee against Kentucky. Gators second possession and a new quarterback. Doug Johnson comes on. Pressure, dumps it over the middle, Fred Taylor can't get it. It was behind him just a bit, some pressure there. Henry Taylor gets to the backfield for Doug Johnson. Steve Spurrier said he would play second series he comes in. Yeah, that's interesting because I think, really, Doug Johnson's got a lot more talent than Noah Brindice. But Brindice played extremely well last week. But I think Johnson, if they're going to play next week, they have got to get some confidence back in Johnson. They have got to have him come off of that strong arm. Brindice. Super great story, wonderful story. Fifth year walk-on senior game on Major's football team. There's been a tremendous attribute to it. But your go-to guy has got to be Doug Johnson in, in big games. Sophomore out of Gainesville, strong arm. Johnson pressured and sacked this time. Good pressure by Cecil Caldwell just blows through there and oh. dumps. Doug Johnson back inside the corner. What he does is he does, it, does an inside swim move. He's to the left of your screen right there. You see him inside swim, just comes right inside. That's an NFL move on a pass rush. That is outstanding by number 96. He's against Pat Browning, who's in there for his first real action. 
You can't overextend as an offensive lineman, but Caldwell took advantage of it. Browning making his second start, but he hasn't played much in a starting role. He's been a backup most of the season, and that time beaten for the sack. Minus nine on the sack. Rob played Taylor, breaks one tackle, and he breaks a couple of more. Down the sidelines, finally knocked out of bounds by Kevin Brooks. Seven Gamecocks had a shot at him. Huh, they did, and started right up front. Sylvester Miller had the first hand on him. They ought to be glad that number 55 got a little stop on him, because look at the number of tackles he breaks. Watch 55 come in there. He gets a hand right there. But look at that. Good leg strength. Run with the football. Good balance. You can't arm tackle him. You've got to get up into him. You've got to wrap those arms around him, or he's going to pick up a lot of yardage. 17 yards on the run, but it's short of a first down. So the Gators will have it fourth and two. And Darren Hambrick is into the game. Hambrick, of course, the leader of the defense, broke his leg in the first game of the season. He's fought to get back, and Hambrick was in on that last play. We weren't sure he was going to play. Wally Burnham yesterday told us he didn't know, but I know Hambrick wanted to play, and he's in there. Good kick, Kevin Brooks. Inside his 15, and swarmed under by the Gators. Well, you know what's interesting on that? Kevin Brooks made a tremendous catch. If he doesn't, that ball is going to go out in the coffin corner inside the 10-yard line. So Brooks actually saved them a lot of extra yardage. Javon Curse covering for the Florida Gators. So South Carolina backed up, trailing 7-0. Back after a word from your local SEC station. It's our grand opening sales event, and we've got the best value on the road in the Kia. Carolina now gets it for the second time. Steve Spurrier's the Gators leading it 7-0. Talking with Doug Johnson about when the Gators get it back. But now the show and the spotlight's on Victor Penn trying to get something going for the Gamecocks. And Drew Williams, nothing but white shirts there to drop him. Devon Curse again and Mike Moten coming up to stop the Carolina tailback. Well, you know, one of the plays that everybody talks about, of course, is your 40-yard dash time. But when you're a Florida Gator, you're a great defense. You talk about recovery speed. How quickly can you recover once you've overrun a play? How quickly can the backside containment react to the play? And Florida does that as well as anybody. They react to the football so quick. You see the Gamecocks offense so far going backwards. Big Penn. Got to get rid of it. Does so, throws it up and grabs and overshoots his man. Just trying to get rid of it. As Steve Mixon comes out on the outside pattern, the ball was overshot. Well, I don't know how Big Penn tried to play action pass here, and he almost bit the dust on it. He tries to play action. Florida's not biting on the play action. They're getting great pressure. Cohen's that time, number 55, and Boat Camp 93 almost had a safety on him. It'll be awfully hard to, to pass this ball when you do play action, but Florida penetrates so quickly. Coming into the game, South Carolina pretty good on third down conversions, 42%. But they're 0 for 1 today, and now they face third and 11, backed up. Ben zips that one under, shoots his man. Ben Fleming was out on the pattern, but the ball was way short. Pressure again on Big Ben. And now Carolina three and out to give the ball back to the Gators. Ball I might have been deflected. Yeah, I thought the ball got tipped on the line of scrimmage. I thought it might have been Rogers or Bochamp on the left side. Or maybe Kirst on the left side that kind of tipped the ball. Look at the left of your screen up there and see if the ball doesn't get tipped on the line of scrimmage as it goes through. Right there. Yeah, I believe it was tipped that time. That would have been Bochamp, 93, who got a hand on it. Courtney Levitt in for a second punt of the day. The Gators pretty much guaranteed good field position if they field the punt plan. And the Gators might be coming after him. We got a lot of guys on the line. Levitt, end over end kick, green in Carolina territory. Cuts to the outside and they're running out of bounds. Good coverage by South Carolina that time. And so Florida gets the ball in good position on a 35-yard punt by Courtney Levitt. Scott Abraham downfield for South Carolina to knock him out of bounds. Boy, I can't, uh, when you look at number five, Jacques Green, he does so much for you, Bob. He is just, uh, he's all over the place. Great on punt return, gives you great field position. Tremendous wide out receiver, very valuable. Stay tuned at halftime for our Bell South You Call the Play feature. I look at a big call from SEC Games Pass. Doug Johnson on for his second series. 
as the Gator quarterback. Brenda Hyde led him down the field on their first possession. Johnson back to throw and airs it out. A bullet, close pattern, intercepted. A curl Freeman saw it coming and picked it off, steps in front of Jack West Green, and Carolina forces the turnover and gets the ball back. Bob, we talked about Arturo Freeman in our opening. We said he's the free safety. He's got to read the quarterback's eyes, and that's exactly what he does. He reads the quarterback's eyes. He's in the right of your screen. He's back there just looking at the quarterback, looking at him, just going up there. There's Brooks. You see Brooks number five in there, but really Freeman playing the quarterback's eyes, reading the pass, reacting to it. If they're going to have a big day today, they're going to stay in this football game. The two safeties have got to play a big part. That's the big part. Freeman was just playing center field yeah. back there. His fifth interception this year, ninth in his career as a game cut. But again, South Carolina needs to move the football. Ten fires in the flat over Jesus' man. Pass, way pass action, hoping to hold the defensive line. But this defensive line of Florida, they come after you like you can't believe. They came into this game with 44 sacks. They get great penetration. They read on the run. So now you make an adjustment. You may go away from that play action, maybe go from a shotgun position or just a three-step drop trying to get those little shorter routes. Then is 0 for 4, throw on the football. And Carolina has not been able to run it very well. Good block on the corner. And Drew Williams sees his way out to the 20-yard line. Boy, they have a first down on that play. That was awfully close. He goes for the marker. He knew he had to make pass around the 21-yard line. Good block on the outside right there. Good touchdown. Now, when you come out there and you get down there, you see that line, you just dive for it. He may have gotten a good mark. But the ball was marked at about the 21-yard line. And they do, in fact, give him a first down. That's what South Carolina's got to do. They have to put some first downs together. Vanderbilt had some success last week running the option and getting outside. And that's on the quick toss to Drew in for a first, first down of the game for South Carolina. The fans got some time this time. Throws a pull over the middle. He's got his man. Kelly. Remember, Kelly makes the trap. Catch. Across the 35-yard line, another first down for South Carolina. Nico Brown on the stop. Boy, Kelly is going to come from the left of your screen. He almost falls down here. He trips coming across. You'll see him coming to your screen right there. He just about trips right there. But he's there taking the place this guy goes to. He had nine touchdowns. Again, here he comes across right here. Trips right after he catches the football there. A little bit loses a little bit of footing. But uh, he's got to have a big day. You talk about big days and big players. Kelly is one of those. Nine touchdowns coming into this game. Back-to-back -back first downs now for South Carolina. They're moving the football for the first time today. Option play. Pretty good catch by Boo Williams as he rolls across the 42-yard line. Tico Brown again comes up with free safety to make the stop. What a good block by Zola Davis, the wideout, number 21 on the outside pressure. Come down the line, read the backer right there, Paul. You see Zola Davis in there, 21? He turns the backer inside, and that's, uh, that's Rutledge, number 58, who's a good backer, so a good block there by Zola Davis. Big Ben was interesting this week in his press conference. Watch the block here, and then Blue Williams going at it. Again, get that yardage, but it's just, just a super play. You like to see that in your wide out. You know, it's not just run a pass pattern, oh, you don't throw it to me, and I'm out of the football game. You got to keep them involved, blocking downfield. Second down, five yards to go. Pan's got his man, Steve Mixon, running free in the Gator secondary. Chugging inside the 20-yard line. Steve Mixon, out of North Augusta, South Carolina, as Carolina inside the Gator 15. What, what Mixon does on that play is what we used to call A and B circle. He circles out of the backfield, and one of the backers takes great coverage and doesn't pick him up. And he certainly knows what to do with the football when he gets it. Runs downfield. He's called an A and B circle, where you bring the A back out, circles around, quarterback just dumps it to him. If the backer doesn't pick him up, the backer gets lost. That's the result right there. It's just a super play. 40-yard gain on it. They actually marked the ball at the 18-yard line. So first and 10, South Carolina on the mark. Option again. Two Williams. Good block in the corner. Zola Davis. And the ball is inside the 10. They are executing oh, extremely well. Where did Zola Davis come up with all these blocks? We think about him in the past, the reception. And this time, he's got Rutledge again. He locks him inside. Look for 21, top of your screen right there. He just locks him inside. And look at 
Bob Boo Williams, when he gets the football, he knows what to do with it. He's their flashy type runner. He can make the big yardage when they need it. Now, South Carolina has got to come away with points on this, preferably seven. This is a good drive. This is a confidence builder, especially for Vic Penn. This will be a first and goal. Hand off up the middle. Fighting three yards is Jacob Bush. You know, Bush doesn't get many carries. This is the quarterback belly feature. You're hoping that everybody's reacting to Boo Williams going out wide, and Bush just goes right up the middle. Quick little handoff to him, then carry the fake action to the outside. Got good results in his first down. Goal to go. We mentioned about Big Ben. He said, uh, has anything changed this week now he's the starting quarterback? He said, now, when he walks through the mall and around Columbia, people come up and say, good <laughs> luck. Go get him. The Mississippi State still trying to stay on that SEC West race, leading Alabama in the first, 14 to 7. Here, Vic Penn, first down, six. First and goal, and Vic Penn wants a timeout. Well, you know, this is not a bad play. Call a timeout rather than make a mistake. Good call. So the game cocks on the march. Trying to tie the game up. Florida leading South Carolina in the first by seven. <laughs> are now available and make great gifts. Out of control, poised so far in this touchdown march, they hope. Hambrick now on his tailback. Tend to throw it. Looks into the end zone. Did he get it? Touchdown! South Carolina! Terry Hood on the grab. And it's 7-6 Florida. You talk about standing back under pressure to the left of your screen, you're going to see Rogers just come in and just level him. But Big Ten delivers a bullet to Perry Hood. Watch Hood come off the circle, get across the plane. Now be a big target. Bang, that's a bullet. That's a pretty good catch by Boy, Terry. Hood. That, that ball is. was behind him. It was. It sure was. But what a big play for South Carolina. To stay in this football game, they've got to score, and they just have. Steve Florio tacks on the extra point. And South Carolina marches down the field, 89 yards to tie it up to Terry Hood. His sixth touchdown of the season takes the pass, second TD throw. Well, I go back to that comment that he made last week to Brad Scott. I won't let you down, and I can tell you right now, Big Ten has taken a little bit of control. He's got a little bit of confidence. You talked about his moving down the field, Bob, with Boyd. That was a great drive for South Carolina, and Brad Scott knows that he knows that they're going to stay in the football game with plays like that. Big Ten now 3 of 7 for 62 yards, and now the touchdown, the strike to Terry Hood. Well, what Hood does is he just comes down to the goal line, you're going to see him in motion now. Go down, just get across the goal line, and square up. Be a big target. It's a strike. Bang. Catch it. As you said, Rubin behind him. But good hands, Terry Hood. Look at John Reed. That way to go, Vic. You're going to, you're going to be one of my guys. And a lot of a lot of situations here. Big Ten really had nothing. He had no snaps before the injury to Anthony Wright. You know, it's interesting, Dave. Uh, all Brad Scott was talking about yesterday and John Easton, the offensive coordinator. He said, if we execute, we think we can lose the football. They executed extremely well on that They certainly did. They put together some good plays, with nice selection, especially that, that little swing pass to, to uh, Nixon coming out of the backfield. That was a big play for them. Boy, uh, the pooch kick, high and short, and it's taken by Rod Frazier. To the 32-yard line, that's where the Gators will take over. Let's go downstairs to Warren Pepper. Uh, Warren Pepper. Hey, listen, all the players continuing to come over to congratulate and talk to Vic Ten. Brad Scott said he's undersized, but he's not intimidated. And he said if just a few of our guys can step up and help make plays, we'll be okay. You saw the pass he threw first and goal at the six. It was behind the guy. He made the pass. Good to help him get in the end zone. The Joey Unitas. One of the backup quarterbacks here, Brad Scott, over to talk to Vic Penn. 
First down, Doug Johnson still on as the Gator quarterback. Throws over the middle, completes to Travis McGriff. Then Washington collars him and brings him down. But it's a first down for Florida as the ball's at the 48-yard line. But it's a good pass by Brindice. Sit back in the pocket, look downfield. Excuse me, Doug Johnson, I should say, number 12. To get a quarterback. Look downfield, pull him out. And you see, he's got the stronger arm. He's got a much stronger arm than Brindice. And he just throws the results. He delivers strikes. They want to get his confidence up. Get him back into the offensive flow. 17 yards on the strike. Now the handoff to Fred Taylor. Picking his way to midfield. And then drop. Kevin Brooks and Cyril Freeman come up. And knock down Fred Taylor. Taylor coming into the game. Only needing 40 yards to get to 1,000. And he's averaging one over 100 yards per game on the ground. Which is second in the SEC in rushing. Behind LSU's outstanding tailback. Kevin Falk. You know, you talk about running backs, and you don't think of Florida as a running back team, but uh, if he gets that 1,000-yard plateau, he's going to join some great running backs, Bob. He needs nine yards. He's at 31 for the day. Second down, six yards to go, Doug Johnson. Taylor gets to the outside, and he's knocked down Homer Torrance. Got him by the shoe string, and Florida has a third down and short. You know, Homer Torrance is an interesting story. He started at corner early in the season, lost his job to Lee Wiggins, but he's a nickelback. He comes in in nickel situations. That's when they use five defensive backs. If he doesn't make this tackle right here, he's going to pick up the first down. Torrance, good arm tackle. Get those hands around there. Pull them down. He's playing his way back in. Junior from Oakland, Florida. Couple of interceptions on the day. Boy, listen to the fans, Bob. They're going to get into this. You're going to hear them roar. Six defensive backs in for South Carolina. Johnson facing a third and four. Johnson looking. Throws the ball away. Intended for Kareem. Sail it over his head. And it'll be a fourth down for Florida. Good pressure again right up the middle. Well, what's interesting is that South Carolina is really only rushing two defensive linemen. And they were still able to get pressure on, on Johnson as he dropped back. They've got Taylor and Caldwell in the middle. And they just keep on working. You see 96 in there. That's, uh, that's Caldwell. Taylor is the other one, number 90. And they just keep on working and working to get in there. South Carolina electing to go with a lot of defensive backs. It almost looks like it's bigger than a dime. I don't know what you call over six defensive backs. You call seven defensive backs. You've got a lot of guys back there. Stevenson trying to pin the Gamecocks back. Spiral inside the 10, looking for the corner. Hits a Florida player and goes into the end zone. Touchback, and so South Carolina will take the ball at the 20-yard line. Now, what he's saying is, I touched the ball out there. Tony George, number one, is saying, I touched the ball out on about the four, five, six yard line. But you gotta have possession. That's what I thought. But do you see what the official's doing? The official's saying right there. He's pointing where the ball is placed. He's got his hat on the ground. No, he's telling him to go up. They're saying oh, okay. he the ball. He's telling him That's to what I thought, too. I yes. sure did. You have to have possession of the football. You okay. can't. It's not where you touch it. That's what I thought. It's the exact same thing. But when I saw him mark the spot. Now, right there is the contact down about the seven-yard line. The official marked the spot. That's what he did with his hat. He marked the spot where the ball was touched. In case South Carolina exactly. tried to pick it up and fumble if that's where the ball was marked. Exactly. That's why he marked the spot. Good call. Tony George down covering for the Gators. 46 yards on the punt. Vic Penn back out. Last time very impressive on a touchdown drive. We're winding down the first quarter in a 7-7 game. 58 seconds remaining. Pitch back through Williams. Chase, Corral, Brock. Mike Moten again. Boys in the backfield all day. Moten is just like you nobody's blocking him. Moten is number 90 is in your screen. When Boo Williams catches this toss and looks up, Moten's about three yards in the backfield. you got to stop him at the line. You can't allow him to get that kind of penetration. Dave, let's talk about the South Carolina offense. This week they've had everybody hurt, of course. Uh, they lost Reggie Baker, suspended, so that was another player dropped off. Uh, they've even looked at Jason Lawson, who has been out all year uh, with the, the bad ankle. Now he's been playing a lot of tackle. Let's see what the penalty is. Personal foul. Ooh, personal foul against Florida. Boy, that will make Steve Spurrier happy. I did not see the personal foul that was away from the ball, but a big play for South Carolina. Well, they marked it where the, where the uh, play was because it was from the spot of the foul. 
Well, you know, the only thing that could be, it was a personal foul. It had to be away from the ball, some altercation away from the football. I didn't see a face mask or anything like that at the point of attack, so it had to be, as I say, away from the ball. But you're right. You know, you talk about the injuries that they have in South Carolina and their offensive line box. That's an amazing story about Lawson. He's been out all week. I mean, he's been out all year with that. I think he had a broken foot or something. Yeah, an ankle problem. And, and then comes back in, and he's starting. Boo Williams spins his way after the 32-yard line. But it's really not like everybody else. They've got a bunch of freshmen. They're trying to redshirt. They don't want to pull them out of a redshirt here, but so they're past working this offensive line. Well, that's a huge play there, too, because what happens is when you say a redshirt, if you play, you lose an entire year. That year counts towards your four years of playing. And what South Carolina is trying to do is trying to allow those freshmen to get an extra year. Entertaining first quarter. The Gators scored on their first drive. Carolina fought back to tie it. We're at 7-7 seven, seven as we head to the second quarter here in Columbia. Two thirty-nine a month. Well, interesting that they should try to challenge Fred Ware. He's the one with six interceptions. Keep great position. Top of your screen. This is lay it up. You never know what you might get. Good play. But look at where he keeps that inside position on the receiver. He just doesn't allow Terry Hood to get back to the ball. He uses his body to block it. Great concentration. It'll be tough to throw again. Him, where he has, of course, now the Florida record with 15 career interceptions. Second and 10. Option. Behind Troy Hambrick. Gets it. Gets a couple of yards. But Dave, when you go against Florida, you got to throw it long once in a while to keep him on it. You're exactly right. What happens is the players, if you don't throw that long pass, Bob, Roger. they start to creep up into the up into the box. They start to come up. That's why I Hamrick is on a bicycle here behind his ditch. The crowd, I guess, they lose the warmth. You got to keep him on it. Third down. Third down and about eight. Carolina's conversions on third down 0 for 2. Big play here. South Carolina needs to keep this drive alive. They've got good field position. Man's got time. Throws in traffic. He's got his man. Kelly, but I think he's short of the first down. He'll be about a yard short. What if you're Brad Scott, you say, do you want to go for this third down, one or two yards to go, or do you want to pin him deep? I think he's got to pin him deep. Right. Got to play the and Rutledge. He must have make the stop. You know, it's a good pass, good delivery, though, by uh, Big Ten. But the receiver's got to get the Yeah, receiver's got to get to the first down yardage. Don't come up short. But Penn reading the, reading the route coming across the middle, that's a good one. Jamie Richardson drops deep for Florida to pick off the expected punt. From Courtney Levin. Wobbly, driving spiral. The ball will bounce and kick into the end zone. So the Gators will take the ball at the 20-yard line. You know what Brad Scott wanted there. He'd like to pin him down. He wants to get him inside the 10. 48-yard kick by Courtney Levin. Doug Johnson coming back at it, quarterback. Interesting, Dave, the fact that last week Noah Brandeis had some success early stage in the game, played the whole way. This game, he drives down the field for a touchdown. Johnson hasn't moved the team since. Well, I know that, now, and I thought about that when they when they pulled Noah Brandeis, but I think what you have to do is you have to look at the season. And I think they feel that they're going to have a shot against Florida State. They have got to have the arm of Doug Johnson. He's just, he's got tremendous talent. That's not taking anything away from from Noah Brindice, but you've got to get Johnson. He's your game maker. So Carolina tailback gets the ball. Picks his hole. He's got great speed. Carroll gets outside. And he's run down by Ben Washington. Washington forced him to the sideline to save a touchdown. Can't miss tackles. Just cannot miss tackles on, on runs like this. When you miss tackles, this is the result of missing tackles. Right in here, you're going to see a missed tackle. Right there. That's a tackle that you've got to make. That's Kevin Brooks' man all the way. The result is he picks up an extra 18, 20 yards after the play. 26 yards on the run by Bo Carroll. Steve Spurrier gave him a pat as he came off the sideline for a blow. 7-7 with 12.43 to go on the second. Johnson again. Pressure. Knocked down. Gamecock gets to him. Piece of Caldwell finishes him off. I think it might have been Corey Atkins at the top, and he got hurt on the play. See if it's not Corey Atkins or John Abraham from the top, 
making the play. 95. See, he comes and gets the arm on him and breaks it straight down. He's still laying flat on the ground. Caldwell, 96, comes up and tackles. But Abraham, he's their sack leader. Six and a half sacks. He's the one that started, got Johnson to move out of the pocket, but he's laying face down. And, of course, the uh, Gamecocks have had some injury problems up front as well. Matt Marsters hurt in the Tennessee game. He is back. Marco Hutchison, who has played some linebacker for him, uh, now he is out of this game of injury. So they, and, of course, Shane Burnham is playing with a, a broken thumb. So, again, we will check on the injured Gamecock when they come back. 12.26 to go in the second tied here in Columbia. Phone's worth. The Gamecock junior quarterback, Anthony Wright, stuck with this season-ending knee injury as he was rolled down by Tennessee linebacker Al Wilson had surgery the next game. And right now, he is down on the sidelines with Warren Pepper. Bob, I tell you, uh, it was just two weeks ago today, and Anthony Wright here, he's been watching most of the first half on crutches. He finally said, I got to go take a rest, huh? Yeah, uh, I told the guys I'll come out and support them before the game. And, uh, you know, I'll be with them you know, no matter where we go. What's it like standing over here and watching these guys play, uh, knowing in your heart of hearts you'd much rather be out there with them? It's frustrating, but uh, you know, it's unfortunate that these, that these things happen. And uh, we just have to deal with it. We've heard everything from six months to 12 months on the rehabilitation. Uh, I'm hoping it'll be about six months. Uh, I'm doing well right now. And uh, you know, I know the Lord will take care of me, so I'll be back uh, for next season. All the best to you, Anthony. Uh, Bob, uh, you'll remember Brad Scott saying they sent a letter this week to Tennessee thanking that athletic department and its fans for the class that they showed and the treatment that Anthony received not only on the field but when he walked back out on crutches. Yeah, it was special. 106,000 fans given a opposing quarterback a standing ovation. They wish Anthony a speedy recovery. Third down, 12 now for Doug Johnson and the Gators and a 7-7 game. Well, big down for South Carolina. They've ran six defensive backs now. They've got to still get pressure on the quarterback. Listen to the crowd. They can't hear the play out there. Johnson throws to Jamie Richardson. Well, short of the first down. Only a pickup of two on the play. Richardson at the line of scrimmage is trying to get Doug Johnson's attention. Yeah, he had no idea what the play was. He just did a little stop and turn. Richardson could not figure out what the play was. He's to the right of your screen. He comes off about two yards. Johnson really slipped on the play. When he popped back up, he thought he was under a lot more pressure than what he was on, what he had. But again, South Carolina, see right there, you see Richardson, 18, just turned. Far short of the first down. But South Carolina's going to get the football back again. You know what it looked like? It looked like that Richardson was supposed to drive off and Jaquez Green was the intended receiver. The punt off the side of the foot. Oh, of Robbie Stevenson. I don't think this punt's going to make the first down. Wow. That's about a 10, 12 yard punt. Look at Steve Spurry. He's going to read his body language. The kicking game. The kicking game. Boy, when you, when you kick a bad one, you know it. This one just goes off the foot. You see it goes off the outside of the foot. Look at the kicker. Oh, no. 16 yards on the kick for Robbie Stevenson. And so South Carolina gets a break, pretty good field position. You know, sometimes kickers, they're trying to be so delicate, they don't want to kick it through the end zone, and sometimes you just shank them, and that's what happened to Stevenson. Big Ben trying to get the lead now in a 7-7 game. Drew Williams at tailback. You can just see Vic Penn getting more in touch, more of a feel of this football game. Let's it fly, left side, Zola Davis off his hand. Fred Weary was out there on the coverage. Boy, Zola Davis made a great cut. Facing the inside like he was going to run a post pattern and came to the back of the outside. And what happened on the play, Dick Penn threw the ball, and I think I think what happened, I think Zola Davis may have just misjumped over the football or jumped inordinately early because what happened was, as the coverage, Weary is way out of position. And you can see Vic Penn. He just knows. He threw that ball just a little bit high. It floated on him. But that was a very catchable ball. And now 4 of 10 through the air for 66 yards. Well, more importantly, Bobby hasn't hurt himself. He hasn't forced an interception. Hasn't thrown it up for grabs yet. Second and 10. Drop play. Two Williams bounces it outside. The four of those Gators recover. Dwayne Thomas comes over, slides out to make the stop. Diego Brown came up, and then Johnny Rutledge 
finished him off. You know, I thought Blue Williams should have gone the opposite way. I thought it was open to the top, but he chose to come down the bottom here. You see, he runs into a lot of gators. You see how quickly they react to the football. You see Rutledge getting off a block. They slide really quickly. Dwayne Thomas, the middle back, that comes in. You see a lot of help from Pico Brown, number 33, the free safety. Did you see Rutledge get blocked and get back up and make that play? Williams today, 32 yards on the ground. Third down, five, Carolina. Then misdirection. Pressure. Throws the ball complete to Williams. He's got a first down. Johnny Rutledge had him by the ankles, but Williams stretches out for the first down. What a play by 6'10". I don't know how he came out of this. When he came out of the pocket, you're going to see him under pressure. He's got Willie Rogers in his face. Right there. He's got Rogers. He gets out of there. Now, look downfield. Where in the world does he pick out Blue Williams? Number four. He's got Gurley coming on him, number 99. But he finds enough to get that first down, and Blue Williams comes down with the football. That's a confidence builder. He needed six. He got seven on the play. First and ten right at midfield for Carolina in a 7-7 seven -seven game. Blue Williams taking his way behind Jacob Bush. It's about a four-yard push. 46-yard line, Johnny Rutledge, Javon Hurst makes the stop of the Gators. And Bob, you hear the boos in the crowd? That's not boo for the play, that's boo for Boo Williams. Popping them on the hat, they're picking up yardage. Again, Boo Williams, he sees that little hold, you're going to see right in here, he sees that little hold, trap block there, Rubiak, the trap man, and then bang, he just slips right through it. Good leg strength, they like the fact that he can change direction quickly. Now there's a Gator down in the middle of the field. And I think that's Rutledge. Yep. John, uh, Johnny Rutledge, the junior out of Bell Glade, up to the sideline. This has been a banged up Florida defense, too. We mentioned the fact that their linebackers really took a beating in the Georgia game. If you look at Bobby Stoops, the defensive coordinator, Wayne Thomas has been banged up. Keith Kelsey hasn't played much. Mike Peterson, uh, the other linebacker, has been banged up all season. And uh, Gerald Owens has had a shoulder problem. Well, you know what? We talked about an interesting stat that you and I talked about earlier. Forty different players have started for Florida a game this year. Forty. That's incredible. Twenty-one on offense, nineteen on different on defense. Different players. That's just incredible. And here they are, two losses, and they're still in the fight. That means you got pretty good depth. If that means you got a lot of injuries. That's right. Vic Penn doesn't like what he wants or what he sees from the Florida defense, and he calls timeout. The time comes at 8.38 in the second, and a 7-7 seven, seven game. We'll be back after a word from your local station. Tim Walker, 6, stands for news. On a gorgeous day for football, 7-7 seven, seven is our score, 8.38 to go, a sellout crowd at williams Bryce Stadium, along with our producer Roger Wilbuck, director Ronnie Dale, Bob Kessling, along with Dave Rowe and Warren Pepper, our Bell South SEC game of the week, it's been a good one, through a quarter and a half, and now everybody's jumping. Looks like Matthews, the tight end, at yeah. the top of the screen, got a little bit ahead of himself, and the penalty will be against... South Carolina. Yeah, you can always tell when one of those wide receivers. Well, the offense, the offensive line prior to the snap. Five yard penalty, still second half. Well, Bob, if you're a big ten, the one thing is you don't want to do in this situation is you've got a lot of confidence. You're moving the ball. Your defense has stopped Florida several times now. You don't want to force a mistake. You don't want to force the ball trying to get something big and make a mistake and get an interception. That's the first penalty of the day on South Carolina. And again, we get back to the execution point. That's what Brad Scott said yesterday. If they execute, they even move the football. Second down, 10. Big 10 on the rollout. And he's back. Great pressure. Willie Rogers banged up last week against Vanderbilt, recovered, and gets the sack, his fifth of the season. Well, you don't outrun. Willie Rogers out there. He's got great speed. He slides the line. Look at that. 45 sacks this defense has. That's incredible. They average almost five sacks a game. Get tremendous pressure on the quarterback. Well, that's a big one, too. That, that takes South Carolina all the way back to the 37-yard line. That's a 12-yard sack on the play. So Vic Penn now facing third down at 24. I think when he went to the sideline, I think that uh, what Brad Scott was says, don't make a mistake. Don't try to go for the home run. If you don't get it, 
throw it, don't throw it into trouble. Big fan across the middle off the hands of the intended receiver, Calvin Owens. Pico Brown came up to knock it free, and so Carolina's got a punt with 7.44 to go in the second. Well, he's right crossing pattern. This is a safe play. You try, oh, there's ball got almost deflected. It looks as if it got deflected, tipped up in the air. But again, it's a safe play. You're looking for a target. There might have been Ed Chester, 94, who got that hand up and deflected that football. But you don't. You haven't made a mistake yet. You're in this football game. You need to stay in it. And the way you'll stay in it is, as you said, execute and don't make penalties, don't make mistakes, don't put the ball on the ground. Zach Kez Green back for the Gators. Oh, booming punt by Levin to the 15-yard line. Step on a block. Green in the open. He's got one man to beat Courtney Levin, and he will never catch it. Zach Kez Green, touchdown Gators. Big play. That was a huge play. Actually, what happened is Courtney Levin outkicked his coverage. So John Kez Green had nobody in front. Look when he catches the football. They're still five to seven yards away. You see him right there make a couple setups. Now he's on a foot race. There's no punter. There's no punter in the world going to bring him down. Not when he's got that much of an angle. He just kind of waves at him and says, I'll see you in the end zone if you want to catch his peek at me. His 12th touchdown of the season and his 30th in his brilliant career. Dallas Cooper nails the extra point and Jacques Green, a terrific run, and the Gators have a 14-7 lead. Well, you see when I say he outkicks his coverage right there, you see nobody in the, in the, in the screen. That means that he kicked the ball longer than his coverage. He makes a couple of really nice moves there now. Set up the punter, get that little bit of an angle. Nobody's going to catch him, not with that speed. See ya. Bye-bye. Get away from Courtney Levin as he went by, didn't he? 86 yards on the return, 49 yards to punt. But again, you got to think that maybe Levin had to take his coverage a bit. He yeah, certainly did. Boy, it's tough on a punter. Watch this. He sees him right now. He's breaking in. He just, oh, no. Here he comes. And look at this. I've got a, I've got the, I'm the only guy between him and the goal line. Now, that won't work. <laughs> Jack has drained his second punt return for a touchdown this season. What a weapon he is. Oh, he is a tremendous weapon. We talked about his... His uh, recept is receiving. He's an outstanding receiver. He's a big playmaker. And a play like that will just turn this football game around. Interesting right there. You see uh, Steve Furrier went over and talked to Noah Brinda. I wonder if he's going to bring him back in. He's not going to bring him on this series because that was the fastest offensive series you ever had. Well, Brad Scott, disheartening. You don't want to give up touchdowns like that in a kicking game. It's amazing in big SEC games like this how many times the kicking game determines the outcome. Well, it's exactly one third of the offense. People don't look at that. Uh, uh, when you when you do film work and things like that, you do special teams. It's about one third of all the reels of the game. The special teams, kicks, returns, things like that. You see how it can just change the entire complexion of the football game. Gator fans chopping now the fact they've got the lead back, 14 to seven. Comes up, he'll take the ball. That's it. Nope. They hand it back. Williams gets the ball now across the 25-yard line. Troy Hambrick is the one actually who caught the ball and then handed it back to Drew Williams. Jack Hill Green has been a triple threat for the Gators. Last month against Auburn, he had to hand it all three touchdowns. He caught a 10-yard pass. He threw a 12-yard touchdown strike to Jamie Richardson. And then he ran one in himself in the fourth quarter. The Gators went on to beat the Tigers 24 to 10. Now Jack Kez Green with 30 career touchdowns. Now Vic Penn trying to answer. And you know, that is when you talk about the discouragement on Brad Scott to give up this kick. But right now they're down 14 to 7. They're still very much in this football game. They need to stay in this game. It's back to Drew Williams, and he is. Throttle after a pickup of about two. Johnny Rutledge makes the stop. And the offensive line now for South Carolina, Andre Spearman. 
is into the game. Number 70, he's been out with a fractured fibula. We thought he was out for the entire season. There you see number 70. So, I guess in these dire straits, yeah. everybody's got to uh, take the arms and go play. Well, what they're trying to do is they're trying to protect five freshmen that they think are outstanding. They say they're not ready to play, and they don't want to waste a year. So you practice them, you don't allow them to play, and they get that extra year if you're able to do it. Second and eight, six, ten, look at Fire over the middle, and he's got his man. Nice juggling catch that time. Jacob Bush hauls it in, could be enough for a first down, and Johnny Rutledge makes the stop. And there's that, there's that A and B circle again out of the backfield. You'll see what, what the receiver does is he slides along and comes right around his man. See right there, bang. He comes out of the backfield, and Jacob Bush, number 11, he's fullback. Doesn't get a lot of opportunities to catch the football. Only had three catches, I believe, Bob, coming into this game. That was good for 11. First and 10, South Carolina. 6.15 to go in the second quarter. Drop play. Drew Williams bounces it outside. And he's knocked down by Kurt. Short of the first down. It'll be second down, but a good pickup on first down, and that's what you want to do. Exactly what you want to do. You want to get that second down in six or seven yards. There's Kurt, 42 in your screen. He's locked on. You see him right there. He's locked on Blue Williams. He's a little draw play now reacts to it. He has an interesting neck collar. If you look at that, the, the neck collar there is, is the black part up under, uh, right behind his helmet. That keeps his helmet from snapping back because he uses his head a lot in tackle. Second and five. Bill Williams knocked backwards that time by the Gator defense. Thaddeus Bullard, number 11, hitting first. Bullard, the sophomore out of Live Oak. And Keith Kelsey coming up. I think Jacob Bush may have got number 11 on, on the offense. He's coming to the sideline limping. He's popping up and down. Yeah. Steve Mixon coming on to replace Jacob Bush, the sophomore out of Jacksonville. So this play just kind of collapses. It's a trap play, kick outside, but you see right there, Bill Williams gets pressure from the inside and just kind of runs along and everybody falls over. The point of attack was just not very solid. Hurst did a nice job. He met Bush straight up in the hole. Vic Penn facing a third and eight now at his own 40-yard line. Over the middle, Sola Davis has got it. In the Florida territory at the 43-yard line. Pico Brown knocks it down, but not before. The Gamecocks pick up another first down. But one of the, one of the offensive plays that they were going to try to do was use Zola Davis, number 21, in the slot and get him over the middle. They felt that if they were able to do a little play action, they might get the strong safety to bite on it. That time you see the results of it. Bring Zola Davis in the slot, try to match him up one-on-one -on -one with the strong safety, and the results were a first down. Gators had Rod Pratty into the game that time in the defensive secondary, so Florida tried a lot of folks back there. Penn. On a first down, Scott got rid of the ball, though, as they get pressure from Willie Cohen. Boy, leveled by Willie Cohen. Cohen did a nice rush. He did a bull rush straight up into him, and then came off He's at the right of your screen. Bull rush straight up, and then come back inside, and I think he just leveled. And watch this. Boom. That hurt. There's the bull, bull rush left of your screen. You see Cohen, 55, gets clean. That'll wake up your quarterback. Then now 7 of 15 for 101 yards on the day. Well, he's going. This front four for Florida is about as good as anybody's in oh, Absolutely. Option. For the corner. Hendricks. Takes his way for about five yards. He's Kelsey. Knocked him down. We did a nice job of uh, making Kiko Brown, number 33, miss. This is down the line, read the backer, flip, make the backer kind of commit on the quarterback. Watch him step over top of Pico Brown, number 33, picks up about an extra five yards. Zola Davis gets another good block, number 21. He's been a good blocker out there. He's locking him inside, and again, he's got Rutledge there. He just locks him inside. He's only giving him about 70 pounds. Hey, no, James, but Zola's sticking his nose in there. Stay with him. Third down, big play for the, the game costume. Man. Oh, he's got his fan wide open in the scene. That's Tola Davis. Davis inside the 15 yard line. Big Penn stepped back and let it fly on a rope. Boy, he did. Did you see how wide open Tola Davis was coming off the line? 
Again, they move him in that slot spot, top of your screen. He's going to run a post pattern. You see when Penn steps up, look at this, nobody around him. The coverage had gone deep. It might have been Tico Brown who had him, but he had to make the tackle. Again, back inside, this is called a post pattern. You run to the goal post. They ran him deep. Underneath coverage was not there. Big play. Rod Grady is the guy who rolled him down, and Zola asked for the crowd to get into it. Gamecocks down by a touchdown. Davis, two catches for 45. Hamburg gets down to the 10-yard line, pick him up a couple. Dwayne Thomas there to put him down. Hamburg actually the leading rusher on the South Carolina team. 419 yards on the ground coming into the game today. Well, Brad Scott has got to be pleased that this first half winds down because his quarterback, Big Pan, has come out, and he has not let him down. He's played just great offense. Bobby Stoops on the other side. You see him there. He's the defensive coordinator. He's got to be a little bit disgruntled because this new quarterback has just come out here and run the offense, and they're getting success. They're having drives. They're putting first downs together. This is the 10th play of this drive. Pan throws into the end zone. It's intercepted. Intercepted Pico Brown. He had a man, Zola Davis, deep in the end zone, but he did get over the top of Pico Brown, and it picked off, and the Gators stopped the drive. You can't float the ball into the middle against this secondary of Florida, and that's what he does. He guesses right there. He sees him. He's off his back foot. He's falling back and throws an interception. Pico Brown with the lead out by 145. Hold on, you turn here. Locked down, wait to punt it. So it'll be 44 seconds when the Gators drop back to punt. As you said, watch the number of people that touch him right there. One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six. Finally, they get him down. Now, if you're South Carolina, you hope for a bad snap. You hope that you get a punt rush on here. You're going to get decent field position with 44 seconds left. The only thing that you don't want to do is rub the punter. Don't give them that automatic first down if, they, if in fact they have that personal foul against the punter. Stevenson on, he missed hit his last one. Fred Taylor, we mentioned the fact that he needed 30, uh, 40 yards today to get to 1,000 for the season. And he's now at 37 here in the first half. So he needs three yards coming up to get to that magic 1,000 yard mark. And he will join a very select company of Gators if the DB can get there. At 76 yards last week against Vanderbilt, and the Gators, of course, are 12-0, and when Fred Taylor rushes for more than 100 yards, and he's had 12 100-yard games in his career, six of those this season. Game Cox have got 10 on the line of scrimmage. They're going to try and get after this punt from Robbie Stevenson. Well, they've got two on the wideouts. and see if they don't cheat those, those outside people at the last second and bring them in and rush from the edges. There they go. You see 33 coming in there. He's going to try to rush from the edge. Here they come from the outside. That's Maurice Henderson who moves in close, coming after him. Stevenson drives a wobbly spiral, and back is Brooks at a 35. Brooks breaks it outside, right down the middle. Brooks is first. Brooks has got an entourage and drives down the last guy to get it. Tyrone Baker saves a touchdown for the Gators. What an effort by Baker. He made a tremendous move. He had him. He was, he was being beat by about five, six yards. And Baker just comes on. Now watch this good move right here. Stop right there. Nobody blocks in the back. There is a flag way, way back on about the 40-yard line. We don't know what that flag is as we watch. They're bringing the football back. But what a move there by Kevin Brooks. This may all go for naught if it's the block in the back. I thought I saw that. Let's see, in fact, if the block is right here. Now, watch right there. If that, I don't think that's the block in the back. I don't. There's the, oh, there it is. There. Yes, there it is. I was looking across the field. I think the block in the back is by number 12, Arturo Freeman. I think he's the one that got the block in the back. Look at Brad Scott. We may be able to see this. Let's think again. See, I was looking down at the right-hand screen, but look at the top of your screen. Right there. That may be the block in the back. You know, that was on Tyrone Baker, too, who got up and made the tackle. Made the tackle. Well, it changes the strategy here for South Carolina. Oh, Justin Hepper. Yep. Oh, wow. Hammer dropped that pass. Now, stops the clock, though, with 24 seconds. Yeah. 
So instead of being inside the Florida 20, now you're way back in your own territory. You don't want to make a mistake here. Oh, this is Neil Downstein, the see Arturo Freeman. You know, that's a tough place because you're running after your block, and all of a sudden he changes direction, and you, you bump into him in the back. Not a clip. It's what they call the inadvertent hand in the back. If you touch him in the back. Draw play, Hambrick. Gets across the 35-yard line. Carolina out of timeout. You wouldn't think that Florida would stop it here. And so the clock will tick down. Pico Brown on the stop for the Gators. Well, and it's, it's been a good half of football for both teams. Florida gets out with that big return, but South Carolina's still in this football game, and their fans know it. Big Ten is certainly in this football game. They're down seven points. Jacques Green, the big play of the first half, with an 86-yard touchdown run. That puts Florida in front, 14-7, after a 7-7 first quarter. So the Gators go into the locker room, leading by a touchdown over a very game South Carolina team. And Warren Pepper is down on the field with Gator coach. Steve down 14-7. Uh, uh, Dave Coxall, you're up by a touchdown, coach. Yeah, we're very fortunate. Uh, they've outplayed us this first half, so we got a lead. Hopefully we won't get outplayed the second half. You've made a couple of moves with your quarterback in the first yeah, half. Yeah, we've played, played Doug, but nothing good happened when he was in there, so we got to let Noah play it out now. Right, thanks, Steve Furrier headed to the locker room. He's hoping... Today's Bell South. What happened? Okay, Warren. Thanks a lot. The touchdown run by Jacques Green, the longest for Florida since 1946. The punt return for the touchdown, and now Florida will kick it off to start things in the second half, and Carolina gets it first. Stevenson will do the honors for the Florida Gators to kick it off. Back deep is Boo Williams. For South Carolina. Glad you're with us. Bob Kessler, Dave Rowe, Warren Pepper from Williams Bryce Stadium. The kick high and short. Who Williams takes it at his 10. Cut free. Williams streaking down the sideline. Williams is going to score a touchdown. And Bob knows for home. 11 wins, 3 losses, and 3 ties. In Columbia, they're 4-3-1. and one. So Florio on to try and pack on a game-tying extra point. 17 seconds into the second half. We are tied now at 14 all. It doesn't take much of these Gamecock fans to get into a contest. This place is electric right now. Boy, it is. And it's electric because Boo Williams has just tied Jacquez Green. It's one for one now, and Brad Scott and his company have got to turn around and say, okay, now we're going back to playing heads on head. Let's go back downstairs to Warren Pepper. 
The emotion on the South Carolina sidelines is something to see, Bob. These guys have come out of this locker room, admittedly, it, you know, they were encouraged just to be down seven, and then to come out the first time they touch the ball and tie these guys with the depleted team that they have is a phenomenal feeling for these guys right now in the Garnet and Black. Big Ten, well, his special team tied it up for him, so he's on a level playing surface as we get set now to play the remaining parts of this third quarter and on into the fourth. What up? Big time. Oh, that was a huge play. Just a huge play. And think about last year. I mean, we're talking about last year was a route. 52 to 25. South Carolina wasn't even in this football game. And, and the last time here was yes. 63 to 7. Exactly. And a lot of those members of the Carolina team were on the field that day. Fair catch made by Rod Grady on the short kick. So the Gamecocks decide they don't want to give up a big play in the kicking game. Good at short, and Steve Spurrier's offense with Noah Brindice leading the way will come onto the field. First and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now, Bob, what happens when you take a quarterback and you bring him over to the sideline? You remember Brindice led him down the field, was caught on that first series. Now he's had to sit and watch Johnson for four or five series. You wonder if Brindice can crack it, crank it back up like he was on that first series. Henry Taylor and the Gamecocks now digging in. Trying to shut down the fun and gun. And had much fun in it the last couple of weeks. Fred Taylor cuts it back against the grain. That's good tough running. And that puts him over a thousand yards for the season. Henry Taylor stops Fred Taylor, but again, over a thousand yards for the Belt Lake Florida product. Well, nothing to the outside. Watch what Fred Taylor does. Keeps on cutting back inside against the grain. You see Freeman number 12 miss him there. He just keeps on coming back. Henry Taylor may finally ends up making the tackle, but Fred Taylor just picks up those valuable yards. Taylor bounces it outside this time. One through an arm tackle by Abraham, and then Homer Torrance comes up to finish him off, along with Shane Burnham. Interesting matchup today with, with uh, Shane Burnham. He went to high school. One of his best friends was Zach Filler, now on an offensive tackle for the Gators. And then you see the list of 1,000-yard rushers. Emmett Smith, twice. Jimmy DeVos, Eric Rett, Neil Anderson, and Fred Taylor, a bunch of number one draft picks. Yes, certainly. <laughs> That's some pretty storied uh, company. If you're in that South Carolina defensive huddle right now, and Shane Burnham's out there, I promise you their feet aren't even on the ground right now. They know they've got a chance. That's all they want. They've got to come up with a stop, though, get it back for their offense. Good guys. And around. Jack Kez is going to throw it. Corey Allen. Oh, Atkins comes up there, smelled it out. Nobody was built, but I think he was looking for McGriff. But McGriff was covered nicely by Freeman in the secondary. And the Gators are going to lose. Exactly what it is. It's reverse, but they don't lose the coverage on Travis McGriff, number three downfield. You see that square up? What uh, Doc S. Reed was going to do was going to throw, throw the football. You're right, Bob. They had good coverage. Here he comes on the back. I'm flipping around right here. Looking downfield. That's the square up the pass. Nobody, nowhere to go. And what you do is your Corey Atkins, number 58, is just hold on and hope for help. Loss of five on the play. Boy, this is crowd, Bob. They are roaring. Rindai dumps it over the middle, almost intercepted as it bounced off the hands of McGriff, and Corey Atkins almost had it. You talk about jumping up. This is a crossing pattern. They're trying to hit McGriff, just coming across the middle. Great pressure up the middle. Just great pressure trying to get in the face of the quarterback. We may have been Cecil Caldwell, number 7, 96 gets in there. Yeah, that's Caldwell, 96. Good pressure on the quarterback. Take a throw just a little bit early. These Spurrier said this season their wide receivers haven't really played all that well, and that was a, a drop there by Travis McGriff. Well, if they, if they stop him on this play, you'll hear the crowd. They're down 15. Half short, off the mark, incomplete. And Jennifer Travis Taylor and the Gamecock defense does its job. They're going to get the ball back for their offense. Kevin Brooks will drift back. Stevenson, 41-yard average today. Brooks averaging 6.8 yards on a return. 
Gamecock haven't been very good in this department. They're last in the league in punt returns. Brooks trying to do something about it in just a couple of yards. Good coverage brought Frazier down. Covering on the play for Florida, a 37-yard punt. We are knotted up. 14-14, the crowd roaring in Columbia. Four full vision. Mm. Ooh, the man behind me is buttering his corn. Be sure to visit the official internet site of the Southeastern Conference for up-to-date stats, games, previews, coaches' comments, and much, much more. The SEC Online is SEC Sports. Com. You get on there all the time. Oh, you? yeah, I have some left. The game cocks are fighting game cocks, ready to rumble. I think they're crowing. Yeah. <laughs> they won't be after that. But uh, the kickoff return by Blue Williams, the first kickoff return for a touchdown against Florida since 1991. Vic Van hands to Blue Williams, the touchdown maker. Not much there. Reggie McGrew, the sophomore out of Mayo, Florida, comes up and knocks back Blue Williams. You know, it's interesting because Vic Penn did not have a lot of success in the first quarter. They had a lot of swing and outs. Brad Scott stayed with him, and it paid some dividends. Well, it certainly has. The one thing that you noted, Bob, and I did also is the composure he kept. He never lost his composure. Things didn't go well, but he stayed right in there. And he looks good when he sits in the pocket, and he's got some time to look downfield. He can pick you apart. Second and ten. Got his man. Terry Hood wide open. Down the sideline, cuts back against Tico Brown. And he's inside the 40. There might have been a fumble on the tail the end of that ball. They're marking it, though. Yeah. I think that I think somebody from South Carolina, and here it may have been Jermail Kelly. Hustling downfield, he may have recovered a fumble. Let's look at this. Crossing pattern wide open. Nobody near Terry Hood. Now he comes back inside. See if the ball comes out before he goes down. Or fell. Yeah, well, see the ball right there? And look at Kelly. Yeah, you're right, Dave. Good call. Tony George is the one who made the hit. Pops the ball free, but Bob Stoops' defense can't come up with it. 27-yard gain on the play. Terry Hood. And now Vic Penn. Stats are becoming pretty impressive on the day for this freshman quarterback out of Miami. Not heavily recruited. Two way in. Runs down on the outside. Good coverage by... Mike Bowden. Let's talk the story about Vic Penn a little bit. Really, nobody recruited him very much out of Miami. Brad Scott heard about him, looked at him. He played in a very good league down in Miami, one of the toughest high school leagues there. And so basically, they just decided to take a chance yeah. on him, and he paid off. Yeah, he said he could hold his own against quick quarterback. Now, they have a backup quarterback, the freshman quarterback, Phil Petty, that they were, they're trying to redshirt. But I'll tell you one thing, they're not going to get Vic Penn out of there easy. Petty's right beside Brad Scott. There he is. He signals the plays in. So he's well aware of the game plan and what's going on on the field in case something would happen to Vic Penn today. Penn throws it over the middle. Off the hands of his fullback, Jacob Bush, as Johnny Rutledge came over and bumped him. And it's an incomplete pass with his third and long. Well, that's the play that worked so well in the first half. That circle out of the backfield by the fullback. A and B circle out of the backfield. That time, Bush did not come up with it. Big down here. Third down, about 12 yards. You're almost in field goal try position. Out here, I mean, you're, you're looking at over a 50-yard field goal. So you want to pick up. You might not want to go for the home run, but you want to get, keep this drive alive. Maybe maybe even try for it on a fourth down. That shot really big, uh, Jacob Bush off the field. you got to execute. got to make those plays. Bad pressure. Swings it. And it's deflected, almost intercepted again. It's headed for Zola Davis. It was Rod Braddy who came up and almost got to the flexion. Nico Brown on the coverage with Zola Davis. Well, this is a learning situation for Big Ten. You can't throw off your back leg. He's got pressure right up the middle. Number 90 is most. You can't throw it up for grabs against a great Florida team. You see how quickly they come to it. He really dodges on that. Gamecock's going to punt it away. Levitt angles for the right sideline and is going to skip out of bounds. Where's the mark? At the 15. That's where the Gators will take over. So Levitt tries to pin him back, gets to the 15, and Florida takes over first and 10 in a tie game at 14 all. Next Saturday, a good one for you. Still the hottest quarterback for the SEC. Tate Manning of the Tennessee Volunteers takes his team to Lexington and Commonwealth Stadium to go up against Tim Couch and the Kentucky Wildcats. 
our coverage here on the Bell South SEC Game of the Week at 12.30 Eastern for the Bluegrass, Manning and Couch, Tennessee and Kentucky next Saturday. So we've got a good one going on today, a perfect day for football. Now this has been a battle between Florida and South Carolina. And back. Taylor, not much going there. Ryan Kaley back in the center for the Gators. They tried while they risk, but Kaley is back in there right now. Henry Taylor makes the stop on Fred Taylor. Boy, good slide that time by Shane Burnham, number 52 on your screen. Slides nice to the ball. Atkins got caught inside, went back around the pile, tore, turned it right back into Burnham. Good coordination by the backers. If you're in Florida, you've got to think first down. You've got to move this football. You can't keep on being three and out and bogging down. Red Dice firing the pass. Intercepted. A Carl Freeman picks it off. Red Dice threw it in the coverage as Freeman makes the pick. Second of the day for Carl Freeman. We talked about the safety being a big part of this game. The free safety, Arturo Freeman, reading the eyes of the quarterback. He's lost in on his receiver, and look at Freeman come up, and he goes for the ball. He takes it away from Jamie Richardson. Center screen, look at him, number 12. React to the quarterback. Go to where the ball is thrown. Go high for it, and he comes down with a huge interception. You put that on a coaching film right there. That's oh. how you break on the ball. Exactly right. Now break let's on the see eyes. if the game talks can take advantage of the Florida miscue. The ball's at the 25-yard line, first and 10. And got a man on the sideline over Schuster. It was the fullback. Steve Mixon out of the backfield, running along the sideline. He was open, but then overshot him. I wondered if the looking back into the sun might have gotten his eyes. This is a good fake right here. You see Mixon comes out of the backfield, number 32, and he lays it up high. You see the shadows back in his eyes. Now he just gets a little bit, it's a little bit overthrown. Really wasn't the sun, but a good call. Good play action, picked up the blitz. If you're, if you're going to stay with Florida, you've got to score when you get opportunities, and this is one of those. Second and ten. Remember the game talk of that two weeks, the open date, to work on this game plan, and Big Ten trying to execute. Draw play, Hamburg. Breaks through there, but gets about three or four yards. Ten today, nine and 22 for 156 yards. Let's give John Reese some credit, the quarterback, though. He has got ten in a, in a mode now that he can run this offense. Absolutely, and this is a good break play on this. If they get him through, if they get Hamburg through the line, he can pick up some big yardage. You want to play safe in this situation. You don't want to throw the ball into trouble. You don't want to make a mistake. There's John Reeves. And you know what's interesting? When they made that switch from John Easton being upstairs and John Reeves being down on the field, they've had a lot of success. Reeves, of course, the former great quarterback at Florida, not trying to beat his alma mater. Damn. Not a good pass there. There are a lot of white shirts trying to get it to Terry Hood. But Johnny Rutledge made sure he didn't get it. And Penn was knocked on his keister that time. Well, they may have really dodged the bullet because I'll tell you, Johnny Rutledge was standing right there. This could have been an interception. You'll see as he drops back, he locks on him right there. And you see the coverage coming right up there? That's Rutledge. He could have had an interception. He wasn't sure exactly what to do with the ball that time. Yeah. <laughs> Penn is also the holder, of course. And now he's on to hold it for Steve Florian. This will be a 40-yard attempt. South Carolina trying to take the lead. Florio has not missed from this distance all season. This time it's blocked. Elijah Williams, who has had a knack of blocking kicks, comes up and blocks that one. And we stay tied at 14 all. given the game Cox the lead. We stayed tied at 14 in the third. Steve Florio has had a great season, 9 of 11 on field goal attempts, but this one was blocked by the Gators. Well, interesting, watch the laces. You've got to spin the laces. If the ball comes down, you want to spin those laces around. Florio hits it on the laces. Now, we thought the ball was flopped in the middle. You'll see 25 and 24 run an inside game. There, Williams comes inside. He just kind of shoots the gap inside, and as you said, Florio had been perfect mm -hmm. from that distance. So the best cue for the game tax on the field goal attempt gives the ball back to the Gators, and Brindai still in there at quarterback. 
Florida has not generated much offense since that opening drive. Taylor, tough yardage right up the middle, but a flag comes down. And Bob, from where that flag is thrown, you almost think it's someone that has to line up in the neutral zone because it's thrown late and it's thrown along the line of scrimmage. So Dustin Miller comes up to make the play for South Carolina. Well, they're, they're, of course, talking. A little, think they're having a little tense intensity downfield. See Brooks in there, number five. The offense, the offense is too nervous and pretty set. Doc Green going at it. Still first down. With Mr. Brooks. That was an interesting call. The legal motion, what he said is the offensive team never came to a set. In other words, they were maybe getting down in their stands. You can see them, see them, they're, they're never coming down. Oh, yeah, as they come down on the line, they snapped the football. They never came to a set position. First and 15, Florida. Fourth penalty of the day for the Gators. So Carroll's got good speed, gets to the outside. And picks up about eight on the play. Lee Wiggins and Brooks in the secondary for Carolina. Runs down this speedster out of Northtown, Pennsylvania. Freshman, 166, an All-American fracture in the indoor circuit. With this nice cut right here. This play is designed to go over center. You see, he sees that seam right to the back side. He just explodes and uses that speed to get to the outside and pick up the yardage. But it's still going to be second down and long yardage to go. Second down at about seven. Carroll with 34 yards on the day. Now a fumble. The handoff was dropped, and Van Washington has picked it up, and Carolina gets another turnover. Fred Taylor looks as if he never got the football. I wonder if Brendeis actually put it on his leg instead of into what they call the bread basket. Watch this. As he comes out here, he gives the football. You see Taylor never gets the football. Right there, he's not got it. You see it falls right down there. And look at South Carolina just coming to the football. That may be Ben Washington, his strong safety. Washington comes up. Two Gator turnovers in this half. Carolina so far hasn't been able to take advantage of it. They didn't get the first one. Now they got a shot at the second one. Pitch back. Who will you? Nothing. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Keith Kelsey. You can't run wide on this field. No, you can't. You cannot run wide. They've got great team speed. They react to the football. We called it earlier recovery speed. You've got to break it up inside. Maybe run to the weak side. Use Zola Davis to get around that crank. But the one thing they have got to come away with is three points, at least in this situation. You just can't keep on trading punches with Florida because they're a knockout team. And the Florida defensive strategy is put enough pressure, enough people in the box to force you to throw. And they're trying to put the pressure on Big Ten to make plays here. Second and ten. Option. Hambrick gets the corner. Gets it down to the 16-yard line. It'll be three yards short of the first down. Pico Brown with the play for the Gators. Bob, all day long, Zola Davis, 21, has locked him inside. Look at him right there. He gets it inside. He's got Rutledge again back inside. That's why they've been able to run to the weak side with success. It's the wide out. Zola Davis hooking the outside linebacker. You know, and wide receivers, they don't like to do that. <laughs> I tell you what, Zola has done a terrific job today, showing some great leadership. His junior out of Charleston. Handoff, they stuff him. Push, couldn't get going. Mike Moten right there to jam it in there. So, Steve Florio is going to get another chance to find give this team the lead. Well, they're holding off, and this is interesting because I think Brad Scott is saying, should we go for it or not? I think you've got to get the three points. You just can't come around, come away with two opportunities. Well, if it was fourth and one, maybe. Yeah, this is fourth and about a long two and a half. So, Florio just had a field goal block. Now he comes onto the field. This will be a 33-yard attempt. And he's 4-5 of from this distance this year. This for the lead for the game time. Oh, he missed it. And he missed it. He missed one against Tennessee two weeks ago early in the game that really got the game time off to a bad start. And now Florio misses this one. And we stay tied at 14. The kicking game has been huge all day long. I wonder if he thought about that pressure of Fred Weary and Elijah Williams to the outside, but it certainly affects them. We're still tied at 14. We'll be back after a word from your local SEC station. My time is very valuable. Places to go. Toyota Avalon. 289 a month, you. 
And so many times, remember, Werfel used to signal with the hand what the wide receivers would do. Just a lot of confusion on Florida's part. Now there's some confusion about the yard mark. Yeah. Where are they going to put it? Yeah. Well, they just marked off. It's first, second, and fifth. Well, they got it first down. Yeah. And 15. So yeah. I wonder if there was a penalty before they marked the ball. But yeah. Maybe that play didn't count. But the yard mark is just first and 15. Hand off, Red Taylor. Good cutback. He's a good runner. Oh, no, boy. He makes people miss. And that's the talent of a great runner. He was going to be stopped in the backfield, change his direction two or three times, make a couple people miss, and picked up five yards when there's no yards there. They're going to give him six. And so it's going to be second and almost ten for Noah Brindice. Started his college career at Wingate. Had some injury problems there. Redford never played. Then transferred, walked on to Florida. Has been a student of the game. One day wants to be a coach. But he got himself ready to play when he got an opportunity. McGriff still can't hear the play. Yeah. This crowd is roaring. Brindice to Kareem, and it's behind him. It's complete. Good coverage. Homer Torrance. And Bob, when's the last time you've seen so much confusion on a Steve Spurrier coach team? I mean, look at Steve Spurrier. He's, he's just standing there. He, he, it's just total fun. Look him out here to the right. What's the play? I can't hear you. Look at all three of them. Have their arms down. The signal is something. And the play is thrown out of bounds. It's just, we talked about quarterback consistency. For Steve Spurrier and company, there's no quarterback consistency. Everybody in the stadium now stands and cheers. Rendai firing behind his man. Jacques Green incomplete, and the Gators are going to have to give it back to the Gamecocks. What uh, Jacques Green wanted that time was interference. He thought somebody hit him in the face. You see him looking, looking around at the officials. He's saying, how could, you, how could you miss that? He thought someone hit him in the face, and that would be pass interference. You see him put his hands up there? That's a lot of frustration. Robbie Stevenson dropping back to kick to Kevin Brooks. Well, I'll tell you, if South Carolina can score, their defense might be able to keep them in this football game because Florida has done nothing on offense the last five or six series. Oh, uh, Brooks flip trying to get to the ball, and Florida's going to get a big break on this one. If Brooks can come up and field that cleanly, he might get it to the 40 or maybe the midfield. As it turns out, it rolls down to the 11. Dave, we were on the field before the game. It rained all day yesterday. It's a little soggy out there. Yeah, he comes up right here. You can see a flip right there. Now you just got to get away from it. But you got to get the jump plus. He might have gotten an extra five or ten yards. The announcements for the game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Potter Sports. The broadcast a copyright presentation. And a use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Potter Sports is prohibited. Bob Kessling, Dave Rowe, and Warren Tucker with you. The pitch goes back to Blue Williams. He dances out of bounds after a pickup of about three. Let's go downstairs now to Warren Pepper. Bob, just a real quick thought. Uh, number 52, linebacker for Florida. Uh, he goes out a little while ago, uh, Dwayne Thomas, and they tell me on the Florida sideline, he's done. He can't go back in. He's dislocated his shoulder. Well, Dr. Pete apparently has changed his mind. He's back in there. You know, if they're going to win this game, they're going to have to do it with defense. You heard Spurrier say earlier this week that they've got a different mindset. They can't score 50 like they used to. Yep, Thomas has been bothered the past couple of weeks with that shoulder injury. Played sparingly last week against Vanderbilt. Teddy Sims got a chance to play a lot. Who Williams? No, Hamburg this time. And he gets across the 20-yard line. Tony George nails him. And it's going to be third down and short. I've always liked the way Hamburg runs the football. I think he's got good selection, good vision into the hole. You see him cut back up there. Inside, right there, he sees a little break, and he picks up the yardage and almost, well, I think they're going to mark it a little bit short. Maybe now they're going to measure it. But, you know, I was looking at Wayne Thomas when Warren was talking about him. He's got a, a left elastic wrap on. They, try, they put elastic wrap on to try and hold that shoulder in. It's really painful. You see it on his left arm there? That's a brace to try to hold that shoulder in close to the shoulder area. Senior out of Jacksonville, you see the ball is short. Third down and a couple of inches. Mike Peterson, he's been in for a couple of plays. Another guy they're trying to get back in that linebacker rotation, but uh, he has been banged up. And, of course, Darrell Owens also another linebacker. Hambrick today, eight carries for 44. There you see Mike Peterson back in, a junior. 
hurt a knee against Georgia. Third down, a couple of inches. Got to make it. Penn puts his head down and he gets it. Victor Penn for the first down. And Carolina keeps possession with 3.31 to go in the third quarter. It's 14 14 here in Columbia. And credit the big guys up front. You see Beckwith in the middle there. They drive him off. Whitfield 78, Nesbitt 79. Just getting down there. You talk about smash mouth. That's just where you've got to get it. That's where a quarterback walks in there and he says, we're going to do a quarterback sneak. We ain't going to surprise him. You guys have just got to win it on the line. Gamecocks, first and ten. Got the 22. And firing over the middle for Kelly. It's incomplete. Triple coverage that time. Tony George was there. Jamel Kelly thought he was interfered with. Boy, he had double coverage on him. And I mean, Penn may have escaped with one on this. Caution pattern, you're going to see play action right there. Roll out. Look for number 84 out there. And look at that double coverage in there. Tony George and Brown on there. And look, he just gets up. Gets up, just runs the official. Says, wait a minute. You mean there's no flag on that? Play? I was bust. What are you talking about? <laughs> you didn't think going to win many of those. No. Down. There you see He's had a terrific freshman year. The nine touchdowns, which is a freshman record. Pitch back. Handler cuts it up. He picked up about five, so the Gamecocks have down a third down and five as the ball will be marked over the 25-yard line. Boy, nice block up front by the fullback, Bush, number 11. At the point of attack, right here, you're going to see the block, right there. You see it right there? There's the block, right in that area there. It allows, it allows Hamburg to look back inside, pick up an additional seven, eight yards, bringing up that third down and four. And Beckwith is also out there, making a play. Bush, one of the ten players on this roster from the state of florida for south carolina 220 to go clock kicks in the third quarter Penn firing behind and short of his intended receiver zola davis Tico brown covering back there for the gators did you see the defensive pressure watch this watch what victor penn does the big arms up i think he throws it right between the touchdown look at that right underneath the arm of number 54, I think that's Willie Rogers, or it may have been Rutland, 58. Yeah, Rutland. Yeah. Yeah. Penn today, 9 of 25, 156 yards, the one touchdown and one interception. Love it, another high kick this time. They kick it out of bounds, kick it away from Jackie Green. And so Florida, they get better field position with each possession. The problem is they're not doing it themselves. They're not moving the ball. Coming up next Saturday from Lexington, Peyton Manning on to lead the Tennessee Volunteers into the SEC Championship game and in the process, nail down the 1997 High School Trophy. Kentucky takes on Tennessee and Peyton Manning next week on our Jefferson Valley Sports Bell South SEC Game of the Week. It'll be at Commonwealth Stadium, the battle for the beer barrel. Steve Spurrier, his offense has been thwarted since its first drive of the day. Noah Brindice, still on at quarterback, looking, firing, almost intercepted. Threw it behind oh. Kareem, and Arturo Freeman almost oh. picked off his third. If his feet don't slip out from under him, I think he has his third interception. South Carolina blitzed on the play. They brought the middle backer, Burnham, on the play to get pressure on Brindice. You see him 52 up the middle. They get the pressure they want as he squares up. He's got to get rid of the football. 90's coming in there, Taylor, to level him. And Arturo Furman, look at this. If his feet don't slip out from underneath him, he may have his third interception. Yeah, this poor offense just looks totally destroyed. Oh, it is. Red dice. They go to the safe play. Taylor pulls his way to the 45-yard line. Corey Atkins at his ankle along with Shane Burnham. We mentioned Burnham along with Ben Washington and Zach Miller, the offensive tackle of Florida. All teammates in high school. And Zach Miller used to come down and Flop down on the couch in the Burnham <laughs> household and eat a lot of groceries. Yeah, I think Wally Burnham said it was the happiest day when he saw him get a scholarship because he knew he didn't have to feed him anymore. <laughs> they talked this week, did Shane Burnham and Zach Miller about life in college football. And this time Carolina jumps 
Going across is Henry Taylor. That's five free ones for the Gators. That'll be a first down. Yeah, Taylor's getting that great jump. And what Brindice did is a smart play. Come out and change the cadence a little bit. Go on three instead of two. See the head there of the quarterback just kind of emphasizing it there. He's crossing black shoe, just kind of drives into him. Can't do that. Taylor's played extremely well today. South Carolina, I just don't know how many times you can keep on asking your defense, Bob, to stop them and turn it over and not get points from those results. If you're just joining us, Florida turned it over twice here in the third quarter, and South Carolina misfired on two field goal attempts. That's why we're still tied at 14-all. We're approaching one minute to go in the third quarter. First and 10, Gators at midfield. Grindice looking, firing along left side for Jacques Green, and he's got it! A battle down there with Kevin Brooks. Brooks lost the ball, lost side of Green, and Jacquez makes a great play. Boy, Brooks was in excellent position for the play, but Jacquez Green just concentrates on the football. He looks it in, and he catches it right on the end of his fingers. Look at him just kind of reach out, catch the football, and stumble over Brooks. Again, drive him off the line. Brooks in good position, inside position, but watch, he just kind of stumbles at the tail end right here and falls down. Green with that great concentration, 38 yards. Pitch back, Taylor, counter play. Oh, what a move! Taylor to the end zone, touchdown, Taylor! He left Ben Washington flat off. It's a misdirection play. It's a big to the strong side, run back against the weak side. You're hoping puts on number six, Ben Washington. Just incredible. 12-yard touchdown, Gallup for Taylor. He's got 69 yards today. More importantly, gives Florida the lead with 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. 20 to 14. And now Colin Cooper on to try and get the extra point. Right through there. And the Gators take the lead. 21 to 14 on a brilliant run by Fred Taylor. Watch this misdirection. Run that way. Now he's always got his one man to beat. And boy, he set him up, turns him all the way around. Maybe it looks easy, don't you, Bob? Yeah. His seventh touchdown of the season, 25th in his career. And you see the scoring drive. The big play, got Ken Green on the long pitch and catch. And it took only a minute, 26 seconds. It's amazing when you get one play, it looks pretty easy, doesn't it? Well, it certainly does. When you have these great players like Florida does, Green and Troy Taylor, we talked about them in the opening. They are the marquee players. They go, I mean, Jocko Green is just hard to stop one-on-one. -on -one. But I go back to those two, those two turnovers that the defense scored, and of course, South Carolina comes away with no points, Bob. That was a huge turning point in the game. And the Gators now have the momentum back. And Florida will kick it off with 41 seconds remaining. Terry Hood now will drift back to get the kickoff from Robbie Stevenson. I might try Boo Williams back here again. Finally, I mean, he still might be tired. Yeah, this crowd suddenly has calmed down a little bit. Oh, they've been excited during the third quarter. Two tremendous opportunities. Now they have to go back to work, Bob, on offense. They've got to get a drive. They've got to put some plays together to stay in this football game. The Florida's a knock-up-dead team once they get that lead. Stevenson's kick going deep. Terry Hood. Hood to the 30-yard line. That's where South Carolina takes over. Taylor, of course, the touchdown here to put Florida in front. Last year in Gainesville, Taylor also had a big day against the South Carolina Gamecocks. If you remember, he rushed for 137 yards and scored three touchdowns. The Gators last year rocked over South Carolina, 52 to 25, thanks to Taylor. Today, it's been much, much tougher for the Gators and Fred Taylor, although they do have the lead here now, 21 to 14. Thirty-one seconds to go, third quarter. Carolina needs to score to tie it. Hambrick cuts it back. White shirts all over. Reggie McGrew, as they turned him back in, polished him off, and Johnny Rutledge has been all around the football all day long. 
You know, Big Ben has had a, an outstanding football game. He's led this team. He's been great on direction, and that's the one thing that he does not have is game experience. And that sometimes can come back to haunt you because you get in a situation like this, and it's not that you panic. It's just that you're looking down there. You want to make so desperately make something happen. And he's got a whole other quarter to think about. 15 minutes to go. Florida led by seven and a half, and Fred Taylor gives them a seven-point lead as we head to the fourth in Columbia. This isn't just a car. It's a sign of how far you've come. First collegiate start. He is doing some things this second half, though, that he's kind of gotten away with. You know, they tried to keep it safe for him. He's tried to force a couple of things, a couple of sidearm things. You wonder how many more times he can go to the well with those without getting burned. If he comes somehow, bring this team from behind. Uh, around South Carolina before it's over, with, they may have bumper stickers that say, Penn State. I tell you what, it's one of the good stories, though, the fact that he hasn't gotten hardly any snaps all season. He just scored a touchdown, but that was on a fake field goal against Vanderbilt. Coming in, when Anthony Wright goes down, and what a job he's done today. He throws that one. He misconnected with Jamel Kelly. Kelly was running the wrong way, and the ball was thrown among the Gators. Incomplete, and so now it's a third down and long. Well, that's a good example of exactly what they're saying, that Warren Pepper was saying. He's gotten away with him. He gets away with this. A lot of crowd around where the ball was going. Look, the ball come right down between three or four players. There were six players there. Nobody knew who was who. Exactly. Let's look at the Jefferson Pilot Sports third quarter stats. You see the passing yards. South Carolina leads there. Florida just an edge in the rushing, but the total yards almost dead even. One yard difference as we go to the fourth. Ten in the second half, only one of eight. Pressure lost the football. Morton picks it up. Is going to score for Florida. Reggie McGrew knocks it loose, and the Gator defense comes up big. Well, it's the first time that Victor Penn decided that he wanted to run the football out of the pocket. He brought the football down. He didn't put it away. He decided he was going to try to scramble out of the pressure, and you can see his reaction. He knows he made a mistake. You're going to see McGrew come in here and make great pressure on him and just kind of swap the ball down now. Bail out on the pressure, and there the ball. He doesn't get it away. You see Moten just come in there, catch it in stride, skips into the end zone, and boy, that took a lot of the life out of South Carolina fans. Yeah, it sure did. 23 yards on the score. They're going to give Florida a celebration penalty. Flag down in the end zone, but Mike Moten, the senior from Daytona Beach, Florida, as a defensive lineman, Dave, you know the thrill. Oh, oh, and then, this may be the longest extra point in college history. It's going to be a 50 yard extra point. <laughs> Do you go for two? <laughs> this ball's going to be at, yeah, you're right. 50 yard extra point. Well, Mike Moten's got to take Reggie McGrath to dinner tonight. He's going to knock it free, and Moten picks it up and rumbles in for a touchdown. Well, here we go. 50 yards. Now, the longest field goal on the season for Stevenson is 40. Or Colin Cooper, excuse me, is 40 yards. Now he tries a 50-yard extra point. It's short. <laughs> That's got to be the longest extra point in college history. <laughs> we'll get our track staff on that. We'll get we'll get that one to dive in headed down to the front. Here again is the play as Vic Penn doesn't feel the pressure. You see McGrew gets the pressure on him. He doesn't put the football away. Moat picks it up in stride right on the bounce. And let me tell you, from a defensive line standpoint, oh, is that a thrill. You know, you go back to the opportunities that South Carolina missed. They missed some great opportunities, and they had the big play against them, and this second big play. We talked about, as Warren Pepper talked about, Penn had been able to avoid trouble. And the first time he brings the football down, he gets in trouble. Let's talk about Brad Scott's situation. He is in a situation five and four on the season. They've got Florida today. Clemson comes in here next week. For them to have a winning season and a full bid, they need to win two and at least one of these games, and it's not like they're losing to 
The oh, season no. aren't any good. I mean, yeah. they're losing a ranked team. Yeah, look at that. Georgia 7-1, Mississippi State 6-2, Auburn 7-2, Tennessee 7-1. That is some pretty high caliber football in your losses, but you're right. He needs a victory this week or next week to almost assuredly get a possible ball, a bowl bid. So uh, it was a huge game, and I know he thinks right now they missed the opportunities in that third quarter when they had two of them. If they come away with six, ten points, 17, or I should say 14 points, it would have been a huge third quarter. Last year, the Gamecocks went six and five and didn't get a bowl bid. So they thought they needed to win seven to guarantee it. But all the adversity and the injuries and the, the problems they've had this year, that ball goes out of bounds. And so South Carolina will get the football. But you look at the adversity, of course, Anthony Wright, the quarterback, heard of the Tennessee game. He was the leader of the offense, one of the leaders on the team. And they tried to rally today around Big Ten, but a couple of big mistakes. And when they didn't cash in on those third quarter opportunities, that's going to come back to haunt him, it looks like. It certainly does. And now it's interesting to see what Big Ten does. A lot of the pressure is off right now. They're 14 points down. Still a lot of time. They've got a, they've got a half of football to play. So, again, and you know that extra point? You realize how big that looms, Bob. That makes them 27. They're 13 points down. Two fields, two touchdowns. You go back to the run. Handler, not much there. Good coverage by Johnny Rutledge, and he's got a lot of tackles today. Hambrick slow to get up. Well, there's still plenty of time, Dave. There's 14 minutes and 20 seconds remaining. No reason to go to any kind of hurry up, but you've got to score on this. Yes, yeah, you do. You've got to. You've got to get. You've got to get a semblance of offense going. You've got to hit one of those wide outs. Jamail Kelly has been awfully quiet today. We haven't heard much from Terry Hood other than that touchdown pass. You've got to get the ball to your wide out. Nine tackles today for Johnny Rutledge on that Florida defense. He's been the leader. 10, looking, fires over the middle, he's got his man, Kelly, did he, no, he dropped it, the ball hit the dirt, so the incomplete pass, and now Vic Penn's got a third down and long, well again, stay in the pocket, he does well when he stays in the pocket, John Reeves, of course, uh, the leader of that uh, offense quarterback, Florida State leading in the fourth now against Wake Forest, and NC State up in Raleigh, leading Virginia 31-24. And of course, Florida getting set for their third matchup with Florida State. And the SEC, Mississippi State, one of the surprise teams in the West, leading Alabama 29-20. Carolina 4 for 13 on third down conversions. And that one won't work either. Javon Kirst comes flying through to sack Vic Penn. And the Gamecocks offense is running out of steam. Yeah, Kurt just was wide open. It just stunned between the back. The linebacker, you'll see 42, just come right back inside. You just curl right back inside. Look at Penny, just swallowed Penn. What you do is you run your two defensive linemen, the tackle and the end upfield. You run the backer underneath and call the loop. Great results there for uh, Florida. Standing back is Jacques Green. Oh, that's a great kick by Levitt. Green, that rolls over his head. And it's going to die at the 15-yard line. Great kick that time by Courtney Levitt. So the Gators will have it at their own 15. The game top defense got to come up with a stop. It's way 12 to go on the game. December 5th, 12 o'clock noon, the Hyatt Regency Atlanta. Two men, two opposing leaders will sit down for one final. Bob, you talked about taking a lot of the spunk out of South Carolina's offense. There's the reason. Not a lot of yards and everything, but very, very talented person. Puts a lot of pressure on defenses, and of course that punt return, or kickoff return, was just extraordinary. Right, 31 yards today on the ground, but Lou Williams, we are told, will not return. I wonder if he was hurt on the kickoff. I wonder, too, because uh, it was right after that that he just never came back into the football game. And now, Fred Taylor time. Taylor trying to get to 100 yards on the afternoon. And he's going to get the ball a lot, you would think, in the next few minutes. And he breaks it. Outside to the 30. Cuts it back in. Stays in bounds. 
And he's to the 45. I like that. When running back, he tried to cut it back in, take yeah. up his extra yards, I just step out of bounds. Yep. He runs, he runs out there and just makes a couple just great moves. You talk about two or three different things to make great running back. Right there, you see the cut. He breaks the tackle. He's got quick speed. He doesn't get uh, pulled down. Now makes a good decision. Stay in bounds. It also keeps the clock running, and that's what right now Florida would be happy to see. 26 yards on that game by Taylor. He's getting close to 100. He's at 99 yards on the day. Looking for his 13th 100-yard game in his career. Taylor cuts it back. He's going to go over 100 and pick up about seven on that play. Ben Washington makes the stop. Davis, Carolina defense, they have played their hearts out today. Some bad plays against them. Some big plays by the Gators, and, and now they're just running out of time and running out of steam. Well, they are, and now it's crunch time now because you look up and you watch that clock just tick down. But they have played an outstanding football game. Every one, I can't think of one that didn't. We talked about how important the safeties had to be. Arturo Freeman comes up with the two interceptions. They got a fumble. They got great field position. They, they stymied Florida for the longest time. And then all of a sudden, Florida just breaks it wide open. Taylor, look at the quick feet. Gets out of the 41-yard line will be a first down for the Gators. Arturo Freeman makes the start. Good one going into the Big Ten. Northwestern trying to knock off the Iowa Hawkeyes. Penn State trying to bounce back after being punished by Michigan last week in the second half. West Virginia in the fourth on top of Temple. Ohio State rolling against the Fighting Illini. Boy, they've fallen on hard times, but they have named Syracuse leading Pittsburgh. Syracuse has made a good second half comeback. And Georgia Tech at halftime leading Duke 28 to 11. Taylor now 113 yards on the day, and he's going to keep getting it. No, that's the captain. I know Kaplan, the fullback, gets it. Pounds his way for a couple. Well, if you're in that Florida huddle, what they're saying right now is just hold on to the ball. If you get in traffic, just double double arm it. Just put the, both those arms around it. Don't fumble the football. Don't put it on the ground. They've got a they've got 13 point lead. Clock's ticking on down. If you're in South Carolina's side, you're, you're just hoping something can happen big. Big hat, hip, rip the ball out. Maybe a fumble, something along that line. Second and five, and Carolina jumps. Henry Taylor get a little anxious there. So they'll line it off against the Carolina Gamecocks. You look at it, Florida still has a chance. They're going to finish if the score holds at 6-2. and two. Tennessee in the driver's seat. So now let's say that Tennessee would happen to lose and Georgia loses a three-way tie. Well, you can see how complicated it is. Uh, with a tie with Georgia, Tennessee wins. A tie with Florida, the Gators are the champions. A three-way tie. If a loss to Tennessee loses to Kentucky or Vanderbilt, Tennessee is out. If they lose to Arkansas tonight, then it could boil down to a vote of the non-participating athletic directors. What happens, Florida, for them to get in, Tennessee and Georgia has to lose. If Tennessee wins out, they are in because they beat Georgia. And we'll have that big game next next week with uh, Tennessee and Kentucky. That'll be a scoring match that you won't want to miss. Eugene McCaffrey again puts his head down. He'll pick up the first down. The clock continues to roll. And suddenly, this stadium, which about 30 minutes ago, was up for grabs, shaken at its foundation, is very, very quiet. Yeah. Well, they know it's grinded out time. Brenda, he'll come up, the quarterback will come up to the center. He'll look at the clock, just let it tick on down, use as much clock as he can. Brindice is in control of this football game right now. McCaslin, tough yard, couple up the middle. A little of that defensive front for Carolina there, Michael Maddox in on the play for the stop on the Cavs with a sophomore out of Tampa, Florida. Boy, you know, we, we talk about turning points all the time. It's been some real turning points. That catch by Josh S. Green, that was just huge. The Gators now playing some different folks in that offensive line. Cooper Carlisle is in. Number 62 is Corey Yarborough. He's an offensive guard. Tara Ross is in the game at tight end. Number 74 is Zach Zendellis is in there at one of the line spots. So the Gators going up there. A lot of their second-team players up front. Fred Taylor, a first-teamer. 
cuts it up, picks up two. Wiley Rich, number 59, back in. He's been in and out of the lineup at center. Michael Maddox on the play for South Carolina. Florida, one thing to their credit, they have tried to play a lot of guys in their offensive line all season long, and they, that has been really Steve Spurrier's philosophy since he's, since he's been at Florida. They always play a lot of their offensive linemen in case you get an injury. Yeah, exactly right. And, they, and we talked about that 40 different players that have played this year, started a football game for Steve Spurrier. Third and eight. Taylor now up to 116 yards. Clock ticking under nine minutes. Looks like some movement, but no flag. Brindice lets it go, and he's got his man. It's Travis McGriff down at the 10-yard line. Well, that's good concentration by Brindice. What he did is he looked downfield and had to just buy a little bit of time. He got some pressure late, just kept on backing up, backing up, backing up, and finally found McGriff trying to cross the pattern. Talking about Steve Spurrier since the divisional play. That's his record against SEC Eastern Division teams. Pretty impressive. The loss, of course, this year to Georgia. Georgia. And then he lost to Tennessee back in 1992. But he hasn't lost to the Volunteers since then. And the Gators, of course, have been the five straight SEC championship games. They need some help, though, to get back to Atlanta this year. Taylor, not much going there. This is in the midst of a 10-play drive that has just eaten the clock. Oh, boy. A lot of big plays in this game, but one that really broke the back of the game top. Turned in by the Florida defense. It surely was. This is the pressure. You see the fumble there. Both picks the ball up and runs in for a score. This is the one, and then, of course, the tail-end play where they, they drove down length of field and got a score. Fred Taylor going for the end zone. Touchdown, Gators. An exclamation point for Fred Taylor and Steve Spurrier's team. 13 yards on the touchdown for Taylor, his second of the day. You know what's amazing? It's just determination by Fred Taylor on this play. He's going to go in that fifth direction again. Gets hit right in there, breaks the tackle by Burnham. Again, gets hit right there. And look at that leg strength, the drive and stretch into that end zone. He ran over people that time. What a running back he is. You know, Bob, we talked about him averaging 18 carries a game. Andrew Z was on a team that was a dominant run team where he got 25, 30 runs a game. He's got 22 today. Collins comes on. Collins Cooper nails the extra point, and it's 34-14, Florida. Fred Taylor, what a day he's having, and the Gators in control with 7.15 to go. When it comes to universities, what matters most? Teaching? Research? Public service? When it comes to universities, what matters most is performance. The University of Florida. Hans and Elke Yeager had just moved in next door. So I thought I'd introduce myself and see if they needed any help settling in. Hello. Oh, hi. Uh, oh, I, I brought you some cool things. Yeah, oh. Amazing, but the change, South Carolina has made some mistakes, missed some field goals, and Brad Scott's team now is down by 20. They've played very, very hard, but Florida has made the plays. Carolina hasn't. That's exactly the story. Jerry Hood to get the kickoff. Short one again. Fielded by Hambrick. Breaks a couple of tackles and gets out to the 37-yard line where Vic Penn will take the field again for the South Carolina Oh, Bob, you know, both oh, these teams get ready Florida. for big games next week. Florida has Florida State. South Carolina, of course, has Clemson. I think South Carolina's got to be pleased with Penn. They've got to be pleased with his play. I think for Florida, I think they've, uh, I think they've still got some questions for him. Penn plays on the ground on a scoring drive. One pass. Taylor did the bulk of the work. And his 13-yard touchdown run caps it off. Taylor now with 126 yards and two touchdowns on the day. Vic Penn. Carolina's got to throw it. Kelly in traffic. The ball knocked away. Peterson there on the defense. 
for the Gators along with Elijah Williams. Tap. And then, of course, they got the long touchdown return on the kickoff by Drew Williams. But then when they couldn't punch it in, when they got those two turnovers, you just felt the momentum swing yeah, back. You really did. And, you know, that the other one is that interception that he threw yeah. down on the goal line. That, that other, that thwarted another possible scoring situation. And off goes to Scott Moritz, who's now on his tailback. Moritz, another one of the players on this Carolina roster from Florida, has been bothered with a turf toe the last several weeks. Was the starting tailback of the season of the game. Gamecocks, the clock continues to run at 6.38. John Reeves, you mentioned the fact that All-American quarterback at Florida in 1971 at that time had set an NCAA record with 7,549 yards passing. Now trying to touch the quarterbacks here at South Carolina. Throws the ball to go. Moritz. Moritz breaking a couple tackles. Hard hit by Rod Grady. Drops it. But it's going to be a first down. And there's a penalty flag back down at the 35-yard line. And we'll see what it is. Big Ben doing a little jawing with Richmond Drew back there. Well, now the official picks the flag up and runs upfield with it. So it's not going to be point of the foul that I can see. He picked it up, sticks it back in his uh, pants. Let's hear what the call might have been. Oh. Let's watch this play on the tail end here once. He throws the ball to Moritz out here in this little curl. Does he get half to? Oh, yeah. He can duck afterwards. Thaddeus Bullard's the yeah. guy who hit him from behind. The attack on that penalty. The Gators now, is, I mean, coming into the game, they've been penalized 74 times on the season. That was one shy of the SEC mark for the year. Kentucky has that honor, and they've got eight of them today. Thaddeus Bullard, the sophomore from Live Oak. Well, now if Carolina can punch it in. They're only down six. Pass is outside to Calvin Owens. Check had to be down by a lot. <laughs> I forgot about the last section. You have to be down 14, yeah, but then you're down five. But still, you want to try and score it. Oh, yeah. Never know what might that's happen. That's what I'm saying. You know, the, the yeah. game was so close. No. You didn't think it got a, out of hand like no. that. No, and that's what, that's what the score is. So it's not indicative of what has happened here today. Uh, Carolina's had many opportunities. They played a strong football game. Uh, they've got a young quarterback who's answered the, the call. Mississippi State now in the fourth. Leading Alabama. Mike DeVos is Crimson Tide having tough times right now. Moritz. Hit by Mike Logan at the line of school. That's Mano Mano right there. <laughs> Boy, that was a smack, too. Both just standing right up in there, just bang, takes him down. Got to come away with a score in this situation. You got a lot of time, believe it or not. 5.30. I've seen, I've seen three touchdowns scored in 5 minutes and 30 seconds. Doesn't happen too often. You've got to get an onside kick. You've got to get some uh, good things happen to you. Uh, maybe a turnover here or there, something along that line. But uh, not give up time for South Carolina. Of course, that victory for Mississippi State will guarantee them a bowl bid someplace. They'd like to make it to the SEC Championship game and still very much alive for that. Moritz down to the 15. Patty is over there. Under five minutes to go here in the fourth quarter in Columbia. 34-14, Florida leads South Carolina. Well, did I hear Jackie Sherrill sign an extension? Yep, that's what well, I heard. Four years extension. Up in the up in the booth, I think you can see a lot more. Yell it down to, of course, to John Reed, the quarterback coach, who signals it in to uh, the quarterback, Victor Penn, in this situation. Right there, Moretz to the corner, puts his head down, and gets to the 12. Elijah Williams comes up to make the stop, along with Anthony Mitchell. This is just put your head down time. Try to get to the outside, dump the ball out here quick. Bang. Now, get, get a couple of blocks. Bridge is this kind of running back. You put his head down. See, once he gets that contact, he picks up about four yards. He doesn't have the shift of, say, a Boo Williams or, uh, or a Hamrick, but he's got that just straight ahead power, more like a fullback. And remember, Boo Williams has not played hardly at all second half because of a twisted knee. 
Penn steps in there, fires over the middle, deflected, knocked away, and tells it's Kelly. And Tony George is the one who came up and was able to deflect it. Okay, now, the bull picture. The SEC champion goes to the Alliance automatically. The SEC number two team goes to the Citrus Bowl to play the Big Ten number two. SEC number three goes to the Outback. The SEC number four to the Peach. And the SEC number five to the Independence. However, remember, there are four conference champions and two at-large bids to the Alliance. So the SEC could get two teams in that Alliance, and that shifts everybody down. And there is some talk that Ole Miss, that pass is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Big Buck Gurley puts up a claw and knocks it away. Boy, and he had Jermail Taylor come right across the middle, wide open on a post pattern. All he had to do was get it for him. Gurley gets that big hand up and smacks the football down. But there's Kelly. He was on a crossing pattern. He was wide open. We may be able to see that play. See Kelly. Kelly's going to come. He's 84. He's going to cut and come right across the middle. Look right there. It's going right to him. Look, he, he even put his hands up. for Jamel Kelly. He came into the game, tied for the SEC lead in touchdown catches with Craig East and Jacques Green. And Steve Florio packed on the extra point. So it's 34 to 21 with 3.46 to go. Kelly, one of the bright stars of the SEC, shining bright today in Columbia. Come into Shoney's part by Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Brad Scott, Gamecock, fighting to the end. They score the touchdown to make it 34-21. The 10th touchdown catch of the year by Kelly breaks Zola Davis' freshman mark of nine here at South Carolina. A couple of years ago, now the Gators have their good hands team out there. Jacquez Green and Tony George and Fred Weary. And they're going to expect the onside kick. There's the scoring drive. Ten plays and 63 yards. And Kelly with the touchdown catch. The onside kick. Did he get it? Torrance. I, I think, think they're going to give it to South Carolina. I think he did. I, yes, he got it. No, no, no. They're giving it to Florida. Stan, apparently he touched it before oh. the 10 yards. Okay. I'm sorry. When he signaled, I thought they were giving it to South Carolina. Yeah. The ball has to go 10 yards. That's where he marks it, though. Boy, that was close. That is. That was almost perfect execution. Not where he comes down, where he touches the football. But the official was right there, and he marked it perfectly. You can see where they marked it. They marked it on about the nine and a half yard line. That was almost a well, Look where the ball is marked. Yeah. And so he is, what, six inches away from being perfect. Let's watch it again. Now watch, it has to go 10 yards. It has to get to the 45 when he touches oh. it. Wow. I'm telling you. That is where he catches it, though, remember. It's not where he comes down. It's where he catches it. So the Gators get the ball in good field position. You would think they'll try and run the clock out. Fred Taylor breaks it. Taylor to the 20. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Fred Taylor. 44 yards. This game is looking like a route. It was anything but a route. But for Steve Spurrier, he's got to be excited because all of a sudden his offense has just awakened. Just get controlled at the line right there. You see him get caved down inside. Fred Taylor doesn't even break stride. Nobody there. Nobody on the backside to make up, and Taylor just scampers into the end zone. Fred Taylor had 134 yards against Tennessee, 126 against Kentucky, and 140 against Auburn. He's come up big again today as the Gators tack on the extra point. And Florida now has its 20-point lead again, 41-21. Taylor today with 170 yards on the ground. Well, a couple things have happened on this play. You can't get paid down inside because he's going to come and run right back up inside the hole. See him make that cut right there? Bang. 
Nobody on the backside slides across to make the play. Just can't get caved down inside. I think that was Mo Collins, or might have been Cooper Carlisle in there that really just caved that whole left side down, the back side of the play. Taylor reads it, cuts back, and he just scampers in the end zone. Taylor likes to play against South Carolina. Remember last year, 139 yards against the game shot. What's incredible is that for Steve Spurrier, in this second half, his offense has just awakened, especially coming into this fourth quarter, because they were they were in this football game, they could have been down unbelievably. To the brain trust, Steve Spurrier and Bobby Stoops talking it over as the Gators are going to wind up 6-2 and two in the SEC, and then... Wait and see what happens. Auburn, Georgia today. Tennessee and Arkansas. And you can see it on Brad Scott's face. They had a good plan. They executed very well on the first half. It's just unraveled here in the second. And it's tough also when you fight so hard all day to give them an easy one like that. Fred Taylor oh, run right there. Just break it and go. And then the almost dead ball bobbled and that's free. And everybody's diving on it, I think. Let's see if Florida's got that one. I thought Florida yeah, they covered do. it. Florida gets it. And you can see again the wet field. And the wheels are just falling off Brad Scott's wagon right now. Things are just going wrong for him. Luke Farmer. Nope. Joe Ferguson just added to the Florida roster today. Joe Ferguson is the one who made the recovery for the Gators. The 170 yards for Fred Taylor. There's a new career high. There's Mr. Ferguson. So this ball just kind of comes in here. Watch the receiver just lose his footing. Comes up here and slides. And you see the ball, they just cover him down on it. Ferguson, what an opportunity for him. Yeah. And he said, just dresses out for the game, just wants to get a chance to play and make the big play for him. Third quarterback of the day for the Gators is Jesse Palmer out of Ontario, the freshman. 6'2", 221, born in Toronto. They think he's going to be a good one here at Florida. He's had a start this year. And now coming in to finish things off with three minutes to go. And Florida leading 41-21. It'll be a battle in the spring to see who's going to be the starting quarterback. Yeah, it certainly will be. I think it's going to be a battle next week for Florida. <laughs> yeah. They kind of they kind of woke up in the second half. But uh, Palmer, a little bootleg. That's wide open. Nobody even close. Rod Frazier is going to run it down to the two-yard line. And he stopped short of a touchdown. And coming up to make the play for South Carolina was Darren Brooker. But suddenly, the South Carolina defense has just caved in. Yeah. It's a little play action, fake to the outside, and he comes back and finds him. Rod Frazier running down the sideline. Nobody with him. You see good effort there. Somebody blew an assignment that time. 35 yards on the pitch and catch. Boy, and you can read Brad Scott's face. He is really upset. Interesting that Florida would elect to, to pass in that situation. I just think that's when you just run the football into the line and clock it down. Well, but you got a quarterback. You're a freshman. And you want to get in some playing experience. Frazier, they're going to let him try and score the touchdown. But the game cocks. Further next and pushing back a little bit. Cecil Caldwell down there to make the stop. Before you turn around and say ifs and buts for sure and nuts every day be Christmas. This game has been an if and but. You know, South Carolina could have been in front 28 to 14. Absolutely. If they score on those two turnovers, but they come away with two missed field goals, and then Florida breaks their back. Three really big opportunities, one just before half. You see Fred Taylor, his career high, 170 yards rushing today. Seventh 100 yard game of this season and flags everywhere we had a lot of flags at halftime on the patriotic show and a lot of flags right there but you know you go back to that one that they missed just before halftime too bob you remember the yes, one where he threw that right. interception in front of that well you just see the hurt on his face can't you oh I mean, gosh you don't think these guys live with it every day, 24 hours a day? Well, they had so many They had so many opportunities. They get three points out of that one fifty four half, then they're leading. They get they get three or seven from those two opportunities when they got the interception and the fumble. And this game is their game, and they know how, how important it is. Oh, Carroll bounces out, can't get in, stops short, then Washington finishes off the job. And Jody Caldwell comes up to make the play. 
And so now the Gators face with a third down. Clock at 1.10 to go. And I know, I know you don't kneel down, but uh, in this situation, you've had a team that's played its hard out. You've beaten them. There's no, uh, there's no decision here. You're under a minute. I just think you kneel down. I'm sorry. The one thing you do, you know, football's like a giant wheel. It slowly turns. When you get up on top, you don't mess on the guys on the bottom because eventually that wheel might turn. Bo Carroll's at tailback. Jesse Palmer. He's going to throw it. Dumps it. Bill Bo Carroll catches it and scores. Bo Carroll with the touchdown with 34 seconds remaining. And that rubs a little salt in the world. Oh, it does. It does. Uh, Believe me, it does. I know Steve Ferrier is running his offense, but if you're Brad Scott and you played with so much adversity, um, I thought there for a minute Brad Scott looked across the field at Steve Ferrier. He's not looking back across the field at him, though. on another point and it's 48 to 21 middle screen on this play take it right here just dump it over look for Bo Carroll number two middle screen catches the football and goes in for a score you see it right there he just comes out of the backfield you see the defensive line all just trying to sprint up there and get the pressure on the quarterback Carroll sixth touchdown of the season and the fourth touchdown pass of the year for Jesse Palmer. You know, I thought quite interesting what uh, Brad Scott told us about the class of Tennessee. Uh, when uh, Anthony Wright got hurt, he said he was, they, they wrote a letter to Tennessee to commend their team on just the spirit and the, the fans, how they reacted when he got hurt. And, of course, the players all coming up with Anthony Wright. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough day for him today. To lose Anthony Wright last week, have to make a big decision with quarterback. A lot of emotion this week. His son just got operated on. Uh, the emotion of uh, going through that and uh, puts a lot more importance on this next week's Clemson game. It's Rod Walters, the athletic trainer, one of the best in the business, talking to Brad Scott, giving him an update on the injuries. And uh, Steve Spurrier's Gators put 48 on the board today. Although they struggled most of the day, but they've exploded here in the second half. It was 14 all. After Boo Williams returned the second half to kick off. But the Gamecocks weren't able to get anything going. Florida took advantage of mistakes and then got a couple of big plays and able now to roar away down the stretch. Troy Hambrick returns the kick for South Carolina. He's Kelsey down to make the play. So 29 seconds remaining, 48 to 21. Carolina is going to fall to 5-5 five and five on the season. And the Gators move on to 8-2. Clemson comes to town here next week. And then following that, the Florida Gators also getting set to take on Florida State. So two big arch rival games coming up. Now at quarterback, quarterback today. Again, they don't want to play Teddy. Scott Moritz comes in and makes the handoff. Kevin Sides was the emergency quarterback today. And there you see Vic Penn fight to the end, get one more playoff. Yes, Penn. Let's go for one more. What the heck? Penn is a competitor. One thing that Brad Scott really liked about him. Hey, side gets it off. Going to throw it long. Air it out for Gomez, and the game is over. South Carolina fought hard today, but Florida just overpowered them in the second half. Brad Scott and Steve Spurrier meet at midfield as the Florida Gators conclude their SEC campaign with a 6-2 record as the Gators win it today, 48-21. It was 14-7 at halftime. South Carolina, on the second half kickoff, scored a touchdown on a Boo Williams 90-yard kickoff return to tie it. And then South Carolina got two big turnovers, but couldn't cash in. The Gators got a big play from Jacquez Green, a Fred Taylor touchdown to take the lead, and from there, the Gators roared away to, a, to the victory. And I don't think you see any, I don't think you see a whole lot of good emotion on either coach. As you watch Brad Scott walk into the end zone, he's not happy. Obviously, his team has just gotten, just gotten it just gets the game just taken away from him. For Steve Spurrier, 
it's not a happy game for him either because his offense really kind of floundered throughout three quarters of the game. 170 yards today for Fred Taylor as the Gators roll past South Carolina. 